The story begins with a lonely monastery that stood on a mountainside. It was cold and dark inside. Only candles lit the spacious hall. The girl, trembling from cold and hunger, knelt before the statue and prayed quietly. But the statue still did not respond to her prayers for several days. Oh God, there were times when I hated you, but please give me another chance. I was truly naive. But no matter how hard the girl prayed, it did not help her. She stared at the marble statue with tear-stained eyes and said, If you give me a chance, I will not repeat the same stupid mistake. After that, her strength left her, and the girl fell on the cold floor. She was still conscious, but she couldn't even move a finger. Bitter tears dripped from her slightly open eyes onto the stone floor. She closed her eyes and squeezed out with the last of her strength. I don't want to die like this. It is not known how much time has passed since then, but she found herself in the castle. Golden rays illuminated the very richly furnished room. The girl rose from the bed. Her hair was braided on the side. Out of habit, she carefully lowered one leg off the bed to get up. Did I fall asleep after I passed out? It became easier to breathe once I got a good night's sleep. The girl continued to evaluate her physical condition until she saw her reflection in the mirror. Suddenly, she was very surprised when she saw someone else's reflection in the mirror. The girl peered intently into her reflection, placing her hand on the mirror. Then she thought, why did I come back? Then she became furious. So she immediately grabbed the vase of flowers and raised it above her head, swinging it. A moment later, the large vase smashed to the floor with a crash. Bianca de Arnaud was a countess from Sevran. She was also called Madame Bianca, but she became famous under the title of the evil wife. Her husband was Count Zachary de Arno. He was not only a loyal vassal of His Majesty the King, but also the right hand of Prince Gautier. While the Count was taking risks on the battlefield, Madame Bianca received many dresses and jewelry. But even this could not change her character. Sometimes she locked herself in her chambers and did not come out. The girl often screamed like a madwoman and broke fragile furniture. The mistress's chambers already resembled a dump rather than a girl's room. The girl was sad all the time and could not control her emotions. The maids were talking. It had been several days since she had stopped eating. They looked with distrust at the large entrance to Madame Bianca's chambers. Then one of the maids turned around and said, Yeah, it's been four days. Maybe we should just come in. Suddenly something happened. It's better that way. Who in the Arno family doesn't know how much suffering Bianca brought to the Count? Lord Arno was extremely fickle, causing the people of their lands to suffer immensely. But then power changed. After the humble and ideological Count Zachary became the new lord, everything began to settle down. The Count made a lot of money from the war, and it seemed to everyone that he was going to make the lands rich. But the evil wife, who lived in luxury, took every penny during the nine years of marriage. But the battlefield was a place where no one knew what would happen next. The maids were cleaning the floor. One of them said, It's been nine years since the wedding of Madame and the Count. Meanwhile, Bianca was sitting in her room and knitting something. There were already several pieces lying on the bed that she had already managed to knit. After making a few loops, she finished. This is lace. This is lace. It became popular when I turned 30. I learned how to weave it in the monastery. The girl squeezed what she had tied in her hands in anger and said sullenly, This is definitely not a dream. Then Bianca threw a scarf over herself and ran out of the room. She walked quickly down the corridor, making loud stomping noises. The two maids who were washing the floor stood up and were frozen with shock. Bianca headed towards the office where a man was sitting and writing something. The girl walked quickly towards Vincent. He was the butler of the Arno family. The dark-haired girl opened the door and shouted, Winky, how old am I now? The man said, stammering. I am Vincent, madam. Didn't you turn 18 this year? Looking away, Bianca said to herself in frustration, I'm only 18? Where is the count now? To which the man replied, He went to the front a couple of months ago, after which Vincent thought, I understand that she is indifferent to the Count, but how could she not know that he was absent because of the war? What was Madame thinking? The lady folded her arms across her chest and looking at the man said, When will he return? She sighed and, lowering her head, spoke quietly. In winter. Suddenly she turned to the man. Winky, I need something. I hate being cold, so get a fox pelt ready. A silver fox. He lowered his head and closed his eyes, sighed heavily and replied, As you say, Madame. Having heard a positive answer from the man, Bianca turned around and headed towards the exit. Vincent watched her go and remembered the words of her trial. Do whatever my wife wants. In Blanche Four, she was brought up in richer circumstances. When she married me, she left all that. So I have to reward her. Whatever she wishes, do it in the best possible way. Then Vincent remembered that angry look from the white-haired man. 
But Vincent frowned and realized in what luxury Her Highness lived. If marriage is a business, then marriage to Count Arno will only bring future benefits. After some time, Bianca was already standing in her room and looking at her new fur coat. Turning her gaze to Vincent, she smiled. You always provide me with only the best. Very commendable, Winky. But interrupting her joyful voice, the man said, You asked when the Count would return, didn't you? Soldiers were walking through the cold and snowy forest. There were many of them, and they were all armed. The very first and one of the most important men was Bianca's husband. He had already arrived in the country. The dark-haired girl frowned, but listened to Vincent. Lowering her fur coat, she squeezed the piece and said quietly, I understand. Bianca threw the fur over her shoulders and headed towards the balcony. The girl went out onto the balcony and stood on the edge, leaning on the railing. Bianca raised her hand up, as if reaching for the sun, and said, I have come back to life. I'm actually back in Arno. She started screaming. As I promised God, I will live my second life properly. She was overcome with emotion and screamed so loudly that the whole palace could hear her. I won't do anything. I won't repeat the same stupid mistake. Warriors approached the palace, and the wind fluttered their flags. The white-haired guy stepped forward, and one of the fighters asked, How are you feeling? I mean, how does it feel for you to return to the country after so long, your lordship? The white-haired man saw Bianca in the telescope and said, My wife is screaming at the sky. The dark-haired guy looked at Zachary and said in surprise, Excuse me? The white-haired man lowered the pipe and froze in place and said, Looks healthy. From afar, the castle was visible. Its gates were so high that they seemed to touch the sky. Two security guards were standing in the cold when suddenly one noticed something, after which the young man looked at his colleague with a grin because he realized that his lordship had arrived. The black wolf's flag is right ahead. The count has returned. The men on horseback were approaching. The young man shouted again, The count has returned! It is Count Zachary de Arnaud, the fierce warrior who has returned. This nickname was given to the count because his silver hair was always soaked with the blood of the enemy. The count looked at his own castle with an indifferent gaze, as if no one was waiting for him there. Then Vincent came up to the count and said, Welcome back, count. A feast in your honor is already being prepared in the banquet hall. The count replied, Thank you, Vincent. Everyone has come a long way and worked hard, so eat and drink to your heart's content. The young man asked the guy, How was the exploitation? They answered, Amazing! You will definitely regret not going, because you missed a great chance to witness the explosive power of me, the great Sovor. The dark-haired guy screamed, Aren't you tired of chatting yet? Sir Robert, have you forgotten how I cut the spear flying towards you? I will brag about my exploits to Robert's entire family, generation after generation, so wait. The girl coughed to attract attention. At that very moment, everyone looked at her, after which the dark-haired guy turned to the girl with fear in his eyes. The two guys immediately bowed to this girl and said, Countess, we are glad to see you. She just turned her head away from them and asked, Where is the Count? One of the boys answered. The Count had already gone up to his room. He wanted to take a bath before the meal. The Countess looked at him with a disapproving gaze, turned and left. Everyone instantly fell silent and looked after her. Then Shayton blushed and said, She's grown so much during our absence. She was so small. Looking at the fur of the white fox, it seems that with age its desires only grow. White foxes are rare animals. You still have to try to find them, the dark-haired guy replied. Savor, stop it. The Count's decision does not concern us. Anyway, why is the Countess looking for the Count? As the Countess walked down the corridor, she thought, Fifteen years? No, sixteen? How many years exactly have I known my husband? All her thoughts were confused in her head, but she continued walking. That day she was determined to discuss an important issue, so she went to the Count. The girl slowly opened the door so that there was a small crack and thought, is he talking to someone? The girl was in slight shock, which caused her face to turn red. The Count took off his jacket and said, So I thought I'd reorganize the estate as soon as I got back. The guy was putting on his shirt and said, I want to check everything before going to bed. So prepare an expense report for this year and next year. But he noticed something. Suddenly, a girl with red cheeks entered the room. The guy was immediately surprised. Bianca? The door was open. I didn't try to peek. The man immediately covered himself and, buttoning up his buttons, said, Why were you looking for me? Something urgent? His wife glared at him, and he added, You can ask Vincent if you need anything. Is it really an urgent matter to see you? I heard that you were back, so I came to see you. I am your wife. At that moment, the girl shone like an angel. In response, the guy silently looked at her and said nothing. All this time Vincent was watching this, standing in a stupor from the tension in the room. The girl clutched her fur coat and thought, 
He is still as cold and scary. Why is he silent? Is he annoyed that I came in without asking? Maybe I should leave and come back tomorrow? Then she frowned and thought, This can't be done. You swore you wouldn't make the same mistakes, Bianca. If I don't take a single step toward getting closer, I'll regret it. After which, Bianca ordered, Listen, I need to talk to my husband. Leave us for a while. The man was naturally a little scared, but still answered. Yes, okay. Sir left the room and stood at the door, trying to eavesdrop on the conversation. Does she really need to talk to the Count? After Vincent left, the couple stood in complete silence for a few more seconds. Then the guy said, Who would have thought that one day you would want to talk to me? The Count sat down by the window and asked, So, what's the matter? The wife tensed up a little and answered with a little fear. Well, the thing is, it's a suggestion. We have been married for nine years. I am 18 and will be 19 by the end of winter. I want to fulfill my marital duty. The Count looked at the girl in bewilderment and asked, Debt, what are you talking about? This question and her husband's misunderstanding put the girl in an awkward position. But suddenly Bianca kicked the floor, after which the girl came closer to the man and said, Heir, I am ready to give life to your heir. Then the girl reached out to the Count and whispered quietly, I want a child from you. Once upon a time, the life of a noble lady depended on marriage. At first, the girl is taken care of by her father, or the eldest man in the family, and then the husband and his family take on this responsibility, taking care of the noble and eminent lady. In the old days, the life of a noble lady, without a father, brothers, or husband's family, and had no heir, was worth nothing. So the girl clutched her dress and said rudely, I want to spend the night with you and give you a child who will inherit your title. Naturally, the man thought about it and put his hand to his chin. After a few moments, he said in a calm voice, I'll be honest, I'm confused. Do you know what you need to do to get pregnant? From such embarrassing words, the dark-haired girl's face turned scarlet. And then she thought, He treats me like a child. How can I not know? This body may be eighteen, but my mind has lived even longer than you. Besides, in a past life we already shared a bed together when I reached the age of twenty. I clearly remember the pain you caused me. How can I forget that? After a few moments, the girl said, I know. Thanks to the maid's talk, I know enough. It's my duty to give birth to an heir to the Arno family, isn't it? So I have to. Know at least this. Suddenly, after all this, the man began to approach her, and she began to move back. He looked down at her with his silver eyes and said, So you can do it. With me, what you know, by the method you know. Soon the girl crashed her fragile back into the wooden door. Despite the girl's embarrassment, the guy continued, Can you conceive a child? she thought in her head. It seems he is angry, although I did not expect him to be happy, but... The guy approached the girl's face, on which there was a slight pinkish blush, trying to read her thoughts. She turned her worried gaze away and thought, I'm scared. The man noticed this, so he said in a firm voice, You are still afraid of me. The girl hesitated, stunned by the statement. Why don't you go back and rest? I need to lie down too. Realizing that he was about to leave, the girl exclaimed, Just a second! He started to open the door and interrupted her. Let's talk a little later. Immediately her face distorted in horror. She imagined the man throwing her out of the house and thought, If I don't have a child. The picture in her eyes changed to her walking through the mountains in a snowstorm. She remembered her fate and thought, If I don't have a child, I'll have to live that life again. Remembering all the horrors of that life, she decided that she would not repeat those mistakes again. She mentally exclaimed, No way! And then she grabbed the man's hand. Naturally, the man immediately stopped and looked at his wife. The girl said in a voice nervous with worry, How much did you get for this marriage? He looked at her in confusion, trying to understand why she was asking this. After some time of reasoning, he carefully removed his strong palm from the metal door handle. Moving slightly away from the girl, he answered in his calm voice, I got 400 calves. After hearing this, the girl froze and thought. The guy then went on to list the reward for the marriage. 900 pigs, 100 silver cups, 300 lengths of silk two chests of jewels, and a piece of land. Altogether, it amounted to two annual budgets of Arno. When the guy finished listing all his property, his wife looked at him with disapproval. A dowry is money that a bride brings to the groom's house. It's like an inheritance that the bride's family gives. This amount can be so huge that it is impossible to remember it exactly. I didn't think that he would simply list everything. Sometimes you need to remember the amount. For example, in a divorce, the groom must return the dowry so he has a mistress. Suddenly she said, Don't worry, I'm not going to get divorced. You can continue your relationship with that girl. Then the guy looked at her with a menacing look and asked, What? You can register your child in my name. I will not interfere with your relationship. 
let me live on my dowry. And she thought to herself, what an expression. He should feel ashamed. Any husband would be embarrassed if his wife started discussing his mistress with him. The guy, having listened to all his wife's statements, exhaled heavily. Finally gathering his courage, he said, I can't even imagine who told you this nonsense. We'll talk about the air when the time comes. It's absolutely useless now. Wait a minute. Why is this useless? The boy turned into the distance. Vincent, take my lady to the room. The man who heard this cry jumped in surprise. Then he slowly opened the door and answered. Yes, my lord. Madam, allow me to see you out. When the man took the girl by the hand, she turned red with overwhelming anger and began to scream angrily. Listen to me. This is very important. Please, count. The girl's screams continued to echo throughout the palace, but the guy pretended not to notice them. The guy pursed his lips, which meant he felt bad. Then he covered his mouth with his hand, trying to digest and think about the situation. The man had a number of thoughts running through his head, but one popped into his head. The nanny had died of an infectious disease. The nanny who came with Milady from Blanchefort. Only with her could the lady be frank. She has completely lost her appetite and still cries day and night. In his thoughts, he reached out to the girl who was sitting on the bed with her back turned. He was almost approaching her to touch her, but suddenly he heard a voice. Not approaching me. Take off your armor before approaching me after returning from the battlefield. Finally, she turned around, showing her tear-stained face and said, You smell like blood. The guy, clutching the blanket, said. When she got to Arno, she cried even when her eyes crossed. Upon returning from the battlefield, she avoided me, saying that I smelled of blood. But today she grabbed me as if nothing had happened. I'm sure I still smell unpleasant to her because I haven't had time to wash myself yet. What has changed during my absence? Meanwhile, Vincent and the girl with brown hair stood near the entrance to the room. The girl stood in front of the door and thought, Our first night took place when I was twenty. After that, we only slept together before he went to war. In the end, we failed to have an heir. And then, when I was twenty-five, the Count went off to war again. Suddenly, a terrifying picture appeared before my eyes, where a guy dressed in armor was being pierced with a spear. In seven years, the Count will die on the battlefield. Before that moment, I must give birth to a child as soon as possible even if you have to take the first step yourself. Then Vincent leaned to the side and said, Madam, I'll show you the way. The girl turned sharply with an angry face. The man stood up warily and looked at her. No need, don't follow me, I'll get there myself. The girl walked quickly, pushing the man aside. The girl drew her eyebrows together and confidently walked down the long corridor. Vincent's gaze followed the girl, and he became thoughtful. Didn't she have fox fur on her? After some time, at dawn, it started to snow. The girl stood and looked at the dawn thinking. I understand that to get pregnant, I need to sleep with the Count. But he himself is hardly in the mood, right? Even if I climb on him myself, he will simply send me away. Then Bianca remembered the naked and sweaty husband she was supposed to sleep with. However, I only saw him naked in the dark, so how was I supposed to know? With such an undeveloped body, it will be difficult to seduce him. Although it is unlikely that it will change in any way in the future. In the past, there was no tenderness coming from him, only toughness. If I were a man, I wouldn't be impressed by my body either. The sun had almost risen. It was quite light on the streets of the castle, the girl thought. Does he love this woman? Looking down at the floor, the dark-haired girl became upset. It doesn't matter who the Count loves. But to give birth to a child from the one whose heart belongs to another, the very thought makes me sick. Suddenly, someone placed her cape on the girl's shoulders. The young man looked at her and said, You forgot your cape with me. For some reason, this surprised the girl and she looked at him with her mouth slightly open. Then her husband complimented her. It looks good on you. Suddenly the blonde man put his hand on her shoulder, but suddenly he abruptly removed it as if he was afraid of something, after which the girl raised her embarrassed face and looked into his eyes. The man looked sad. He looked at the girl and said, Thank you for today, after which he turned around and headed towards the exit. The countess stood in a stupor from such tenderness and could not comprehend the situation. He also suddenly decided to talk about fur, did he want to shame me for spending so much? After which she roughly grabbed her cape and pulled it off completely. Her soft, warm cape immediately landed on the floor. The blue-haired woman screamed furiously. Your Excellency, what is this? Is this really a squirrel skin? Then she turned to the boy and shouted again. Our Miss Freezer. She wore the finest furs in Blanchefort. She kept screaming. Even if you are a count, you are as far from the county of Blanchefort as the moon. The woman screamed again and behind her stood a beautiful little girl. The girl looked at the woman who was still screaming. Miss could have become a duchess, not a pathetic countess. 
The guy turned away from the woman and said, If you need anything else, ask Vincent. The nanny did not hide her claims. Among those close to Arno, she became known. Over time, the Count created a rich country. Perhaps his words were mocking, but I did not hear gratitude from him. The girl thought with a smile on her face. He thanked me for meeting him after the war. He was probably surprised. Even listening to Ginny's complaints, his face remained indifferent and somewhat businesslike. Meanwhile, the guy sat and washed himself. He sat in a warm bath completely naked and enjoyed the relaxation. The guy got goosebumps and was surprised. Meanwhile, the girl thought, soon I will definitely get him into bed and give birth to his heir. The guy was confused as to why goosebumps ran across his body. The next day, everyone at Arno Castle was in a state of alarm over an unprecedented incident. Is it true? The lady was looking for the count? They say she even went down to meet him. And then she went to his office. Are we really talking about the lady? My wife was cleaning in front of the count's room and saw everything with her own eyes. She left her fur with him, and he went and returned it. I wonder what was in the room. I wonder what's going on between them. Isn't it wonderful? The lady will soon come of age, so I wouldn't be surprised if she gets pregnant soon. But even if not, maybe their relationship will at least improve. I'm sure the lady now has a different opinion of the Count. But among this company of maids, one evil girl quietly muttered, A different opinion? And what difference will it make? Shouldn't the Count receive this gloomy woman? The girl with brown hair answered, Oh my God, Ante, what if someone hears? So what? There is no one who thinks otherwise. She is a gloomy woman who does only what she wants. And the knights and servants were alarmed as if they were mentally retarded. Have they really forgotten who you are talking about? I would definitely warm the Count's bed better than this uncouth girl. The brown-haired girl screamed, Annette, think about what you're saying. That's incredibly rude. The truth is the truth. I'm sure the lady's skin is as cold as her heart, like a snake or frog skin. She herself is so skinny and unsightly, like a reptile. Suddenly the countess appeared behind the blonde and swinging her arm sharply said, clench your teeth tighter. And then she gave her a hard slap in the face, so hard that even the blonde flew back a little. A few minutes before, Bianca was sitting peacefully on the sofa, knitting a scarf. Unnoticed, someone approached the girl from behind and she exclaimed, God, why are you sitting here alone? Have you already told Zachary that you are ready to accept me and my baby? Now I will also live in Arno's castle. Bianca immediately thought angrily, Zachary? What's wrong with her? Is she the Count's mistress? Don't worry, sister. Zachary and I will take care of Arno's family. She folded her hands in front of her and grinned mockingly, looking at the uncomprehending Bianca. While the blonde was saying this, Bianca had a picture in front of her eyes of herself snuggling up to Zachary. In her imagination, they were holding hands like a loving couple and looking at each other. And again in Bianca's thoughts, Zachary said, We must take care of the successor of the family. She glanced sideways at the golden-haired woman in horror, but she continued, As always, if something is needed, but only you can give me what I need. Only you, Count. The girl lay on the bed. Through her sleep, tears flowed down Bianca's cheeks. She opened her eyes abruptly and stared at the ceiling in confusion. But she didn't continue to lie there, so she got up from the bed and sat on it. Was it really so traumatizing for me that the Count showed me the door back then? But this does not mean that he cannot have a mistress. The main thing now is to cross paths with him more often. The girl quickly got dressed, but the stream of thoughts did not cease to worry her. The girl left the room and turned the corner and thought, What else can I do? There are no other options. Shouldn't the Count receive this gloomy woman? My God, Auntie, what if someone hears? The girl, having heard this gossip, hid back around the corner and began to listen to what they would say next. So what? There is no one who thinks differently. Have you really forgotten who you are talking about? Bianca thought angrily. A dark woman, you say? A woman who brings slander on the family's reputation? I would definitely warm the Count's bed better than the Countess's. But suddenly someone called out to the blonde, and she turned around with a smile. It was Bianca who came up behind her. And then, naturally, for such rudeness, the maid who wanted to seduce the Count received a slap in the face. A red mark appeared on the cheek. Tears came to the maid's eyes, and she touched the sore spot. Furious, Bianca said, so you heard that I'm cold like a frog or a snake, but not that I spray poison? Perhaps that is why she dared to open her mouth and slander the path I am taking? Bianca turned sharply to the other maid and shouted, You! Bring the rod! Then the girl turned to the offender and said, You're out of luck. There's an aura of anger around Bianca. Do you think you can get away with it? The maid returned with the rods and handed one to Bianca. The enraged countess immediately snatched the branch from the maid's hands. The girl slowly began to approach the maid. 
The lady was very angry. She turned to her maid. Stretch out your hands. The girl stood with tears in her eyes, realizing that she was about to be punished. But still she stretched out her trembling hands straight. The countess swung the vine and then hit the girl's palms. Maid Yvonne turned her head to the side. This is because she dared to compare her ungrateful self with her mistress. The blonde, lowering her head, began to cry furiously while Bianca beat her. Everyone watched as the mistress beat the girl and were stunned by such aggression from the countess. One of the guys said, Somebody get the butler. Then the lady raised her hand again and said, And this is for daring to desire her master. But as soon as the girl wanted to hit, someone managed to grab her hand. Naturally, the angry Bianca turned around and heard a voice. What are you doing? Behind the countess stood a guy with long, dark hair who was trying to protect the maid. The girl immediately became indignant. Who are you anyway? Everyone knew about the three commanders of Zachary de Arno. Of the three, only Robert served faithfully before Lady Bianca, he thought. No matter how indifferent she was to the Count, how could the Countess not even know my name? He turned his head and introduced himself. My name is Robert, my lady, the girl thought. Robert? He is one of the three commanders? I'm disciplining the maid, so let go of my hand. He answered her. I dare say you're overdoing it. You are undoubtedly my mistress, but I cannot silently watch this abuse. He let go of the countess's hand, and for a second there was deathly silence in the corridor. She turned to him and said, I can admit that I am extravagant and have a bad character, but I can't ignore direct insults directed at me. You shouldn't have said that I'm a terrible and cold wife, and that you can sleep with my husband instead of me. The lustful blonde immediately shuddered from fear and the sight of the evil countess. Suddenly, a man entered the room and the countess immediately turned her gaze to him. It was Zachary. His appearance puzzled not only Bianca, but also everyone present. The servants immediately lined up along the corridor, bowing as the count approached his wife. Bianca became even more angry because she was prevented from properly punishing the lustful maid. The beaten maid, who was sitting on the floor, mentally rejoiced. Thank God, the count will definitely help me. True, the count was a magnanimous gentleman. There was only good talk about him. He let the thief who stole the grain go when he promised to return twice as much, although for theft a hand was cut off. Bianca saw how jubilant this woman was and became angry with the Count. She thought that it was she, the very woman that Zachary was hiding from her. The man approached his wife and saw that she was clutching a whip tightly in her hand. There were calluses on her palm, and her hand, clenched into a fist, was shaking. Zachary's brows furrowed as he saw this picture. He expected something like this from Bianca. They both looked at each other with some strange hatred in their eyes. Bianca, is your hand okay? The girl unclenched her fist and looked at her palm. Before that, the girl hadn't even noticed that there was anything wrong with her hand. But now she realized that her beautiful and tender palm now looked like a bloody mess. The girl squeezed the rod again, applying all her strength. Zachary turned to the man standing behind him. Vincent, call the doctor. My wife's hand needs to be treated. The girl screamed sharply. No need and pointed her finger at the maid she had beaten. Better let him take care of the face of the girl you adore so much. She is your lover, right? I punished her so that all my subordinates would learn a lesson, after which she gave him the whip and began to leave, because she thought that this girl was his lover. Vincent waved his hands excitedly and shouted after her, Madam, what about the wounds? But she shouted back, Who cares about my wounds? You'd better heal this maid's face. The lady walked further down the corridor in a distressed state. When Bianca had gone far enough, Zachary asked, So what happened here? Knowing that the Count was a kind man, the maid pretended to be a victim and answered, Count, I was just diligently washing the floor. But the man rudely interrupted her. And then? If you were really just cleaning, then why are you all beat up? Why did my wife decide that you were my mistress? The girl was caught off guard and had nowhere to run. Ignoring the trembling maid, the Count turned his head towards Vincent and addressed him. Vincent, do everything you can to keep rumors from spreading about this. The man then left, leaving behind the maid sitting on the floor and two advisors. Then he turned around and shouted, And you get ready to go home, Vincent said. I was nearly thrown out for eavesdropping. However, servants are good when they keep quiet, but you don't know how to keep quiet. That's why you're not suitable for working in this castle. He ordered her to return home, but the girl only started shouting after him in response. Then Vincent noticed a knight standing nearby. He turned to him. Commander Robert, what are you doing here? I saw that the countess was beating the maid and tried to stop her, but then I found out the details. Her actions were justified. I am very surprised that she decided to punish the maid personally. It was hard to comprehend that someone who had no interest in life in the castle could react like that, but Vincent dispelled doubts. 
The mistress's actions today did not contradict her role, even though she was cruel. The man himself did not understand why, but now he was sure that Bianca's attitude towards Arno had changed. That same evening, the girl sprawled on the bed in her chambers and stared at the ceiling. Then she threw her mangled arm over her eyes, the wound still bleeding. She despised herself for her actions and also felt unbearable pain in her hand. The girl opened her eyes abruptly and thought, If my hands are so swollen, then that maid doesn't have hands at all, but breadsticks. This thought made the girl feel lighter. Then the girl folded her arms across her chest and continued to think about something, trying to distract herself from reality. But the events of today were etched into her consciousness. The Count must be comforting that girl right now. She continued to think of the maid as her husband's mistress. The thought that Arno might right now be whispering to a maid that he would one day throw Bianca out of the castle was unbearable. The girl rolled over onto her side and stared at the empty side of the bed. Next to her lay a fur coat, which she stroked with her hand. The lady opened her heart only to her nanny Ginny. After her death, there was no one left next to the girl. In the castle, the young lady had no one to rely on. The girl again remembered her past life. After all, she, the narrator of this story, was a simple servant who washed the floors in her mistress's room. She could only watch from afar the suffering of the one who bore the pain in complete solitude. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. The girl got up from the bed. She asked loudly, Who is there? A maid with a basin stood at the threshold. I came to treat your wounds with a herbal decoction. This will help the swelling go down faster. Bianca immediately hid her hands in her fur coat. The maid continued, Since you don't want to call a doctor, I'll help. Please trust me just once. I'll just make a compress and leave. Seeing the concern she was looking at her with, Bianca replied, Okay, go ahead. Then the girl took a white towel and soaked it in the decoction, then applied it to the mistress's hand. Bianca felt strange. She was in pain, but compared to the pain from the bleeding wounds, it was bearable. Noticing how the mistress grimaced, the maid asked, Does it hurt? I'll be more gentle. Bianca felt the warmth of the maid's palms and remembered the one she could rely on. When you fell in front of people below you in status, you hardly cried and held up well. I'm sure everyone wanted to help you up, but you're such a valuable person that you can't be touched. One day, someone will come along who understands you. And when that happens, take the initiative. So Bianca asked quietly, Tell me, what is your name? The maid smiled and answered, My name is Yvonne. The lady looked away and asked sheepishly, I think the decoction helped a little. Can you make it tomorrow too? The maid felt how her mistress was afraid of refusal, but she still stretched out her hands and asked. So Yvonne was happy that she could help the lady and answered. Of course, lady. Bianca wasn't good at making acquaintances and thought, so what next? The girl was afraid that if the Count did not want children from her, then he already had a beloved woman. What should I do? What should I do to survive? But the maid's voice pulled her out of her thoughts. God, what beauty! The girl picked up one of Bianca's scarves from the floor and said, I saw something on the floor, and I couldn't help myself. It looks like the wings of a goddess. This is the first time I've seen such beautiful embroidery. Bianca smiled, as if remembering something, and said, Exactly, I have it. The girl lifted the light, almost weightless embroidered scarf in her hand. She looked at this fabric and thought, Well, of course, even without an heir, father, brother, I have a weapon. Meanwhile, the young man walked confidently forward in his armor when they began to shout after him, Forgive me! The man paused for a moment when someone shouted again, Young knight, wait! The handsome young man turned his head and paid attention to the guy who was calling him. You have very long legs, that's why you walk so fast. You are the Viscount Vieg, sir, aren't you? Three years ago, this title passed to my brother. At this time, I am the head of the Arno estate. My name is Gustave de Blanchefort. The count immediately looked at him with surprise and incomprehension. A man sat on the king's throne and held a golden cup. At the king's feet stood his faithful knight. The young man began to apologize. I did not recognize him. I ask you to forgive me for my rudeness and ignorance. Could you spare me a minute of your time? I've been dying to discuss something with you for a long time. After some time, the table was set with lots of sweet things for tea. Here are collected various herbs growing in the kingdom's garden. The young man looked at his tea with interest. They say that in foreign countries, you can drink herbal infusions these days. The guy took a small sip of tea and then put it down. Then the count looked up and said, So what did you want to talk to me about? But Green-Eyed was in no hurry to answer and calmly drank tea. Until this day, I have been loyal to the king with all my heart. Therefore, I had no shadow of doubt that His Highness Gautier would one day become the legitimate ruler of Sevran. Gustave immediately imagined the majestic image of Gautier. 
The guy looked down and said, Of course, this is a fairly small group of people, but it's too early to relax. Then he smiled slightly and calmly waited for an answer. The young man was shocked, and his gaze became more expressive. Thank you for the offer, but I am only a newly titled knight. The dark-haired guy was clearly surprised by the words and said, You are very modest. You are the one who has been preparing for battle since the age of sixteen and received the title of baron. I wouldn't say that you don't have glory. Blanchefort will always remain on the side of His Highness Prince Gautier. The boy smiled and continued his speech. I wish that you would share with me the honor of serving Prince Gautier. This proposal really shocked the guy. If I take the oath of allegiance, no one other than the future king will forgive me, so how can I refuse? The young man lowered his head and said, I hope for your continued support, Your Excellency. In response, Green Eyes smiled and muttered, And you take care of me, too. The guy with green eyes turned to the young man. I want to ask about something else, but this is more of a suggestion. Would you like to get married? I'm sure with your looks any woman would want to share your bed. On you? Zachary asked. But Gustav immediately answered, No, I already have a wife, but on the other hand, I have a lovely unmarried daughter. If you marry her, you will become not only an ally, but also a full member of the Blanchefort family. I think this marriage will be beneficial to all of us, and I hope you will not miss this opportunity. This shocked the Count even more, and he could not comprehend it all. It was hard to refuse Count Blanchefort's offer, especially for someone who had been kicked out of his family empty-handed. Through marriage, he could obtain a grateful origin, which could be compared to a profitable business deal. Vincent was sitting in his office. Papers and pens were scattered across his desk. Four hundred calves, nine hundred pigs, ten silver plates, three hundred pieces of silk, and two chests of jewels. Vincent turned to Zachary and said, It won't be easy for Arno. But the boy only said, You'll have to try. Send a letter to where they asked for reinforcements last month, and find out how much they are willing to pay for troops. Zachary left the man's office and walked down the hallway. He was thinking about something and did not notice his wife. Bianca raised her head and frowned at Zachary. The blonde looked at the girl, and lowering his gaze, he froze on her hand. The dark-haired girl's hands were all covered in wounds. It got dark outside. On the night the Count threw Auntie out, he hastily called three commanders. The black-haired young man hurried into the office. He was thinking, why such a rush? Is it possible that Argon has invaded again? We only got back yesterday, but it's already time to go to war again? All three met in the corridor and rushed to the office. Opening the door, the black-haired man cried out, Your Excellency, did you call us? Zachary was looking at some documents. He adjusted his glasses and looked at the guys. What happened, Your Excellency? Has Argon attacked again? If it's time for war, then. But Zachary interrupted the brown-haired man and said, No, there is a more important question. What could be more important than war? The ash-haired man frowned and drew his eyebrows together. The brown-haired man thought, Since when does the Count wear glasses? However, they suit his trained body. While the boys were discussing their issues, Bianca was arranging her hand in her room. But the fair-haired one added, I want you to guard my wife. To which all three simply said, Excuse me, what? And this is more important than discussing military issues? Why does someone who is always sitting in the Countess's room need an escort? It's probably because of today's incident. Do you think something like this will happen again? But Zachary just said angrily, Stop talking, Sovor, just shut up. From what you said, she spent most of her time in her chambers. Therefore, from now on, you must be close to my wife and watch her so that she does not get hurt. Meanwhile, Bianca sat in her room and continued knitting. The girl put a pillow on her knees and knitted. But the dark-haired girl looked up and smirked. The sun was just rising above the horizon, illuminating the castle with its rays. The whole castle was quiet. No one except the maids woke up so early. Bianca's personal maid was no longer asleep, and having prepared water for her mistress to wash, she headed towards her. Walking along the corridor, the girl hummed a cheerful melody under her breath. The maid opened the door to Bianca's room and said, Mistress, good morning. But even after the sun began to shine on the girl, she did not want to wake up. Therefore, the maid immediately closed the curtains so as not to wake the mistress. And Bianca di Arno continued to sleep peacefully. The maid decided not to wake her mistress for now and carefully took her hand, the girl thought. Her palms were still swollen. If she'd allowed them to call a doctor, everything would have healed long ago. Then the maid wiped the sleeping mistress's palm with a towel. At the moment, one might even think that the girl liked her job. I don't even dare to think of myself as equal to God, but I have a younger sister her age. Her sister Lucy married a carpenter who is much older than her, so they don't see each other very often. Every time she thought about the lonely mistress within the walls of the huge castle, the maid remembered her little sister. 
Suddenly the girl woke up. She quietly asked, Yvonne? The maid apologized for waking the girl. She got out of bed, fixed her hair, and answered, Thanks to you, I woke up not too late. Can you help me change my clothes? The maid asked. Mistress, do you want to leave the room? Bianca nodded her head and said, I have a lot to do today. A few minutes later, two girls were already walking down the corridor. She rubbed her shoulders with her hands and thought, Still a little chilly. Then the girl smiled and said, Madam, I'm sorry, I forgot to bring your fox fur. She turned and went back to get her cape, leaving Bianca alone. It's been a long time since anyone has treated her like that, she thought. Smart girl. The girl then imagined what would have happened if they had met in a past life. It seemed to her that if they had met earlier, everything could have turned out completely differently. But I'm not in my past life anymore. Come to your senses, Bianca. I don't even have enough time to live my new life. There is no point in wasting this precious time regretting the past. After some time, having waited for the maid with the fur coat, the girl went to the accountant's office. After Mrs. Vincent appeared, he was very surprised. You were looking after the finances of the Arno household, weren't you? The man answered hesitantly that she was right. According to the rules, she should have managed the finances, but because of her age, she did not do this, but now she is 18. So she furiously asked Vincent to teach her all the intricacies of an accountant. That's why I'm asking you to teach me, Vincent, he mentally admired. The lady had pronounced my name correctly. Come to think of it, after buying a coat made of white fox wool, she somehow changed. This had never happened before. She always spent huge amounts of money on luxurious things. But her expenses have decreased significantly, then he thought. And the desire to independently manage the family's affairs does not seem like a stupid momentary wish. Immediately after that, he shouted, Please trust me, madam. I suggest learning everything by doing. Let's walk around the area right now and I'll tell you everything. The man went forward, throwing out loud words. Let's go, the girl thought. It won't be that easy to get pregnant from the count. This has already been tested in a past life. Then I'll start doing something I didn't do in my past life, running the Arno family's household. To do it right, you need to find the right people, and with their help, help Arno develop. Then the Count will understand that I am no longer that incapable child. Then Vincette said, Actually, I would like to talk to you, madam, to discuss the matter of your security. What other security? One of these three will accompany you everywhere. You've already met Commander Robert, right? This is Commander Gaspar. He is a slightly withdrawn person. And this is Commander Sover. He is a liberated citizen. Madam, who will you choose? The girl thought. Do I still have to choose? The Count's loyal commanders. Apparently, they are not eager to do this. No need. You're not far away, right? I don't need the extra noise of walking around with my retinue. It is disrespectful. This is the Master's order. To assume that I would be a political partner of the wielder of absolute power was a bit hasty, even in the matter of choosing an escort. He did not suggest just anyone, but ordered to choose among trusted persons. She continued her thoughts, feeling disgusted. Escorting is a great excuse to spy on me. A silhouette could be seen in the window as the girl thought. The Count was in the window and the girl continued her thoughts. The Count had set up surveillance under the pretext of escort. Therefore, no matter what the Countess does, he will know about it. Can we then say that the Count and Countess are truly equal as spouses? It's fair that I have to ask my husband for permission, and he doesn't demand anything. Let's think positively. Yesterday he listened to me and tried to stop. If I take him, I will constantly hear grumbling at my side. There will be no empty talk from him, because he is basically silent. But excessive silence will be oppressive. And here's Sovor. He's one of the downtrodden commoners, right? Sover smiled and gave a thumbs up to show that he didn't mind. Looks like someone who will definitely be dumb. Definitely not worth choosing. I am already living my second life, but this is the first time I am faced with such a pressing choice. They are all without flaws, but you have to choose someone. In that case, my escort will be. But suddenly, someone covered her with her own fur coat. She was in a stupor and never said who would be accompanying her. There was confusion and fear in her eyes, and at first she thought it was the Count. Who is it? Is it really him? And turned around. But it was the maid. She turned around and said, Mistress, I beg your pardon. Thank you, Yvonne. And Yvonne replied, How could it be otherwise, madam? I am strong enough and can do much more. What a lovely maid. She seems to be very close to the Countess. Yvonne looked at them, and the knights immediately began to whisper. The girl had amber eyes and light brown hair pulled back into a bun. Robert blushed at the sight of the maid and waved his hand at her. The Countess narrowed her eyes and thought, and her appearance instantly relieved all tension. Well, I can't choose. But why doesn't anyone want to volunteer? But suddenly, one of their team raised his hand and said, Me. 
Yvonne and the Countess looked at him. They were stupefied and surprised. It was Gaspar. Even the other guys were shocked. And Gaspar said, I will become your guard. He has the build of a count, and his face is emotionless, and now he has volunteered to be an escort. They started asking him questions. Are you serious? Tell him you were joking, the girl thought. At least there won't be any unnecessary noise. And she answered, It doesn't matter to me. The man with the monocle clapped his hands and said, Then it's decided. From today on, Sir Gaspard will be the escort. We've wasted too much time. Let's start with the bedrooms. But then someone in black boots came out of the castle and said, Bianca. The countess looked back and wanted to see who had come out and what he wanted. She turned around and saw the count there. She looked him straight in the eyes and tensed a little. The guy stood, his gray eyes fixed somewhere into the distance, looking at the girl mysteriously and thoughtfully. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Let me touch your face. The girl was stunned. Her eyes expressed the shock she was experiencing at that moment. Then the boy reached his hand towards the girl's snow-white cheek. Those who were nearby were surprised by the guy's actions. The guy ran his hand over the girl's velvety face with gentle movements. Without thinking twice, the guy said, You have a fever. She grabbed her face to make sure what the guy said. You are right. It is probably because the lady was outside for a long time without a coat. The dark-haired boy noticed the balcony above the large door and realized that this was the Count's office. The guy stood in a stupor and asked a question. Your Excellency, were you watching the whole time? The girl opened her eyelids and was very surprised. It's better to go back to the room today. I need to talk to my wife, so I'll take her there myself. Then he hooked his arm around his wife's back and carefully led her towards the building. The girl was stunned when she heard the man's words. Talk? Really? While everyone looked at the couple in surprise, the Count led the girl to her room. The people standing behind were delighted with what they saw. A few seconds later, the couple entered the building. The guy led his wife, holding her hand tightly. The girl looked at him and thought, What does he want to talk about? Probably to discuss yesterday's incident. He'll make you apologize to that girl. Since he wants to bring her as a second wife, then, in his opinion, we should get along with each other. What a Casanova of the millennium. While you were bathing in the love of that woman, I spent my days alone in my chambers. The girl asked, Under what pretext would you volunteer to accompany me if I didn't have a fever? After which the guy turned around and looked coldly at his wife. If you want me to apologize to that maid, you can't make me. I'm not sure if she's in love with you, but for now I'm the countess here. Suddenly the count said calmly and cold-bloodedly, I have already thrown out that maid. A few moments later, the girl caught up with the white-haired guy and stopped, asking, What? Kicked out? Is this how you want to clear yourself of all suspicion? The man looked at the screaming girl and simply remained silent. In that part of the building, there was a window, through the glass of which one could see a husband and wife talking about something. The man gathered his courage and said, I don't have any mistress. Now you want to avoid this topic altogether? I may be just a child in your eyes, but I won't buy it. The white-haired man fell silent. The expression on his fair face changed slightly. Suddenly he placed his strong palm on the girl's forehead. Covering Bianca's bright emerald eyes, he thought, Trust me, I'm not that shameless. To have a mistress without the wife's knowledge. Whether it's the temperature or the fact that he closed my eyes, I can clearly hear his heartbeat. This familiar aroma comes from the Count's hands. Then she remembered her past life and thought, The scent I smelled back then. The Count removed his hand. The Countess blushed, wiped her mouth with her hand and thought, I'm crazy. What am I thinking about? The Countess said, That girl was not your lover. If you don't want to bring this up, I won't anymore. The Count sighed heavily and said, What a stubborn one. The Countess replied, If we had a child, there would be no doubt. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not, it's still too early for the receiver. The Count and Countess began to quarrel. But the man won the argument because of his stubbornness. I walk around your castle. Nothing will happen. The Count replied, This is not my castle, but ours. Then Bianca thought, The Count never spoke of us in his past life. After which, the Count put his arm around the Countess's shoulder and said, The temperature is rising. Let's finish here. After some time, the Countess lay breathing heavily, and her temperature rose. The Count took a cup of tea and said, Gaspard volunteered to be Bianca's escort. Vincent poured tea, and the Count continued, Robert, Sovor, you can distribute his duties between you. Robert raised his hand and volunteered to be in charge of logistics. Another knight said, Leave the stable work to me. Meanwhile, Vincent brought a tray and said, It's been a while since I made mulled wine. When the knights arrived, Vincent immediately handed them a cup each. The gentlemen were offended by me, but today she suddenly asked me to start doing her housework. Bianca's intentions have changed a lot. 
You said she usually stays in her room. That's how it was. But lately she's been coming out more often and has done a lot of things. Then the man asked, By the way, what did you talk about with the lady? Two knights listened attentively and built theories, and the third was glad that he was poured some mulled wine. She thought I had a woman on the side. Perhaps Bianca was worried about being sent to Blanchefort. One of the guards immediately remembered the countess's words. You shouldn't have said that I'm a terrible and cold wife. It suddenly dawned on the clerk. So that was why she had been so angry with the maid yesterday. Bianca didn't send letters to Blanchefort? Vincent replied. Not a single one. She didn't send anything. The Count raised the cup to his mouth and took a couple of sips and thought, Count Blanchefort, he doesn't think of sending the line. If you remember how he reacted to the death of his nanny Bianca from an infectious disease five years ago, Zachary remembered talking to that man. Bianca is in a really tough spot right now, but he only answered him coldly. If this disease had struck Arno, it is worth telling His Highness the First Prince to send his condolences to the affected areas. There was only one thought going through his head. He didn't care about Bianca, and I would like you to let me know what particularly interests her. Make sure she learns how to run a household and gets used to it before spring comes. I intend to take Bianca with me to the capital of Laos. I thought it would be no more than three months. If you're unlucky, you could easily become the scapegoat here. The guard began to nervously finish his tea with hands shaking from confusion. At that moment, Sovor's head began to draw future events in his opinion. He called it Sovor's Theater. A beautiful wooden carriage drives onto the stage. Clouds and mountains are in the background. How much longer must I ride in this carriage? I want to have my afternoon tea. Stop. Gaspar, I can't do this. Let it all end today. I don't want to ride in a carriage anymore. Gaspar was again played by Sovor. Countess, be patient. If we stop, we'll have to set up camp. These are your problems. But yours too, Countess. Gaspard is not at all good at adapting to others. Why did the Count suddenly decide to take his wife with him? The young man thought. She, obviously, would buy up all the fashion trends from the store shelves with great pleasure. I had already forgotten that she got married. And isn't a wife's job to wait for her husband and run the household? Although they don't have a receiver yet. Suddenly, an idea came to his mind. Your Excellency, is that really the reason why you want to take your wife with you? That you are going to have a successor? So this is what you want to talk to the Countess about. In the spring, you are going to go to the capital with her. Well, actually, no. To which everyone asked in unison. What? I don't think there's any point in talking about this, since we're not going anywhere yet. The three guys thought at the same time. She might refuse to go. Why does he take her consent for granted? The Countess, who had been doting on the Count's plans, recovered and began to learn how to run a household. Dawn had just broken. And an elderly man, who was clearly frozen, stood on the street with a book in his hands. The man turned and heard the girl say, Sorry I'm late, Vincent. The man shouted excitedly, Countess, good morning. While I was getting ready to go out, I lost track of time. It's colder than usual today, to which the Countess asked. And still, not too many clothes. If I had known that the illness would drag on, I would have taken that cape right away. Most of the territory is flat land. The hill where the castle is located is one of the highest points, the man said. There is a forest and a river in the east, so it is possible to develop various farms. The countess took off her hood and thought. About Arno's territory, Vincent spoke only once in his past life. A little later, when it became known that the count had died in the war, Viscount Vigu drove me out of Arno. If you go east, you will see a forest. You need to follow the path for ten days. Then the lands of Blanchefort will appear. While I was walking barefoot, I thought how lucky I was that the ground was so flat, the countess thought. When she wandered everywhere, she hated this place with all her soul. Then the maid ran up to the countess and said, Mistress, I will straighten my clothes. Now that I have decided to survive, I look into the distance and am amazed at how beautiful these lands are. What a beauty! Looking at the smiling mistress, the maid immediately became very happy. After examining the surroundings and explaining the situation of our territories, Vincent stopped at the sewing shop. Vincent then introduced the countess to the maids. The girl was wearing a warm fur coat, beautiful color with beautiful patterns. The girl said, Did you hear everything, madam? That embroidery. Who made it and for how much? I embroidered it. It took me about four days. I'm almost done. Suddenly, Bianca looked at her and said, Find me tomorrow. After which the girl turned around and walked on and asked, What's next on the plan, Vincent? Bianca started walking so fast that Vincent shouted at her, Wait, mistress! All the girls were immediately horrified, and the dark-haired one said, What? What did I do wrong? The lady thought. This dark-haired girl is quite capable. She sews quickly. I'll teach her easily. 
Next, we have a butcher shop and a candle shop. So we have a candle shop. This is a butcher's shop. Salting meat, storing it for the winter, everything is here. A lot of fat can be obtained from slaughtering cattle. Next, where is the candle shop? After which, Vincent immediately pointed his finger in front of her and said, Over there! The place where candles are made is so close. I was told that a candle was almost a luxury item. I should see how they are made and remember. A man with a beard and a belly was cooking. He had a stick in his hand, with which he stirred what he was cooking. This is pork fat. I release and lift the wick many times, so the candle becomes thicker after each approach. The man offered her a candle. Bianca looked at him without looking away. The girl said, It's different. It smells strong. The man replied, It's because they're made of different materials. Your candles are made of beeswax. The material can only be obtained in the spring. There is little of it. That is why it is so expensive. The Count ordered candles to be placed everywhere. No wonder you don't know what pork fat smells like. Is it because they buy expensive candles? You say my candles are made of such rare, expensive materials? The man said, No, madam, this is the Count's order. She answered angrily, It doesn't matter. Let's go home already. Vinken was so cold to me earlier. I'll tease him. The goal for today is accomplished. Time to go back. Suddenly the girl hit her foot, and after that a crumb followed. The girl screamed from the blow. She felt pain and discomfort. The blonde guy put his hand on something wooden. It was a box, and in the box sat a little boy holding a knife in his hands. Despite the fact that the boy was scared and his knife was covered in blood, the man shouted rudely at him. Then the man grabbed the boy by the collar and he started crying. And the other man asked, Nicola, what are you doing here? The girl stood in front of the lady and said, Lady, stand behind me. The lady looked at the boy and thought, A knife. Who told the boy to do this? Someone is manipulating him. The man with the beard shouted, Knight, this is my colleague's son. He was just playing around. Don't be angry. Suddenly the lady stepped forward and said, Leave him, Gaspard. Yvonne, examine him. Naturally, Gaspard let the boy go, and the man bowed to the lady and said, Thank you, lady. I will punish him. The lady looked into the box and was delighted. There was a beautiful angel candle in white flowers. The lady took out a candle. Vincent was surprised and shouted, Oh my God, the boy chops candles like that. Having calmed down, the boy turned to the lady and shouted, I am not chopping them up. I was saving God. In a dream, God said that he was trapped in a candle and needed to be saved. Was he trained to carve candles? The man replied, No, but he had recently acquired the habit of ruining candles. Vincent approached the lady and whispered, My lady, practice is much more useful than theory. Scold the boy. After this, Bianca looked angrily at the boy, and he immediately thought that he would be hit. But the lady looked at the boy and said in a calm voice, You, find me tomorrow. Then Bianca turned abruptly and walked away, and Vincent immediately ran after her. The next day, the girl and the boy came to the lady very frightened. Both guests looked excited as they approached the palace entrance. A lovely maid looked out from behind the palace walls and said, You both have come. Come in. I will inform the lady about you. They walked along a long corridor that seemed endless. While the maid was escorting the guests, the boy shouted, Little sister! Thank you for bandaging my wound yesterday. I washed your handkerchief yesterday, but it is not dry yet. I will return it to you later. You should thank the lady, not me. It was she who asked me to help you yesterday, and the scarf was hers too. After which the boy immediately remembered that determined girl. The lady simply had nowhere to put the scarf, so I had it. She is also glad that your wound is healing well, the boy asked. Did the lady really say that? Nodding her head, the maid turned and walked forward, but collided with someone. The collision sent the dark-haired girl flying and falling to the floor. It was another maid who seemed to have deliberately pushed the girl. Her eyes flashed with contempt, filled with anger, and said, You. Traitor. Yvonne continued to sit on the floor while the other one walked away, the maid thought. Ante, who had recently been thrown out of here, had many friends in the castle and beyond. Rumors that it was the mistress who had driven Ante away spread quickly, and they began to call me a traitor. Because of this, I now constantly see hateful looks from them. The boy asked, Are you okay? Yes, everything is fine. You should have looked more closely. Luckily, I have a pretty strong constitution, so I didn't get hurt. So let's go! The lady is already waiting! Hurry! A few minutes later, they came to the door that led to Bianca's room. Opening the door, the guests immediately saw the irresistible Bianca, who said, You are so early. Quite diligent. I just said find me today, and you came in the morning. They were both shocked. After all, yesterday the lady looked like a hot rabbit. Then the girl took one of the sheets of paper on her desk and asked, 
can you keep your mouth shut? The black-haired girl immediately answered in a hurry. Yes, I am often called a quiet one. Without my permission, you must not tell anyone about the design that I'm about to show you. The countess showed her the design and said, I will teach you this lace. You will try to make it in a week. The countess gave the girl her drawing so that she could do the same. The girl looked through all the drawings and asked, What kind of lace is this? But suddenly, Bianca looked at the boy and said, Now you, you've been stealing Arno's candles and carving things out of them? Didn't Vincent tell you that for theft hands are cut off? But since you are still young, I will give another punishment. Then the countess opened the box, in which lay large and beautiful candles. These are premium beeswax candles. Your punishment is to cut out as much of these candles as you can. But madam, this is not a punishment. Why are you giving something valuable to someone like me? I thought you would drive me away. After hearing this, the girl looked at the boy with surprise. You could say I'm investing in you two. They looked at the girl in bewilderment. They did not yet understand what she wanted. They looked at the girl in bewilderment. They did not yet understand what she wanted. Then the girl put her fingers together. I plan to make a business out of this. Beautiful and light handmade products made from textile fibers. Over time, lace will become part of fashion. There were two girls sitting on the chairs. They were the best seamstresses in Arno. The girl stood in an elegant dress and looked somewhere into the distance. Beads hung on her neck. The man was reading something and was getting nervous. He clutched the paper and bent over a little. Then Vincent raised his head and asked, Madam, is it possible to obtain the quantity indicated in the order? You really don't get it? Nicola makes beautiful candles. This kid is very talented, I guarantee it. She smiled, and her pale cheeks turned red. Give the yarn to the seamstress. We will need more materials, so you will be able to get a lot. Suddenly, the man was pushed out of the room and the door was slammed. Tears began to flow from the man's eyes, and snot began to flow from his nose. My lady's expenses are becoming the same as in the old days. He was walking past the door when someone screamed, Fire! There was a burnt jacket lying on the floor. The maid put out the fire and looked at the burnt fabric. What should I do? This is my only winter clothing. Suddenly, someone turned to the girl. You should take better care of your things. There were two more maids standing next to the girl, who most likely set the poor girl's jacket on fire. The maids began to whisper. Milady would soon tire of her and send her away. Let's see what happens. After some time, the seamstress looked at the sweater and said, I can't sew this shirt. Yvonne only said in response, So all that's left to do is throw her out. Sorry, last time it was me who brought the rod and was the one who informed the butler. The woman started to take off her coat and said, Put on my coat, otherwise you'll catch a cold. No, I'm fine, I'm very strong. But after a while, Yvonne finally gave in, accepting the cloak that could at least somehow warm her. You have less and less clothes each time, Yvonne replied. It's because I accidentally burned my shirt. Madam, don't worry, I'm fine. I won't get sick even if I'm cold now. The green-eyed girl looked at the girl and thought. Suddenly, Bianca screamed. She remembered. I haven't worn that coat lately. The coat with the gray squirrel fur. It's still here. Squirrel fur is good too, but you wear a martin coat. Madam, the martin fur coat looks much more luxurious on you. I won't wear the squirrel fur coat anymore. Yvonne, you can have it. Me? Are you sure? To which the countess replied. If you don't like it, you don't have to wear it. And yet, if possible, I would like you to wear it. I want you to always be by my side, at your best. Madam, is she worried about me? The girl was delighted, but Gaspar, who was behind, was not so much. After some time, Yvonne finally put on this fur coat and asked, How do I look? You look beautiful. To which Yvonne said, It fits perfectly, madam, and it's very warm. You are my maid. You work hard. I am glad that I can please you. Then Bianca walked forward proudly and said, Vincent is waiting. Let's go. This coat will be passed down from generation to generation. The countess asked, Where are we going today? And Vincent answered, This is the cattle grazing area, my lady. Grazing cattle? It's winter now. To which the man replied, Horses graze in winter too. Beautiful views, blue skies, and a river that divides the lands where the horses graze. This is all because the count ordered that horses be bred so that they could withstand the harsh winter. It turns out that Arno's horses are very strong, great. Oh my God, what thoughts! I'm starting to imagine the worst-case scenario. Even though I promised myself that I would never get kicked out again, the prospect scares me. Milady, look there! And he pointed his hand into the distance. When the girl looked where Vincent pointed, she was perplexed. There were several horses running towards her. There were three horses, brown, and their manes were blonde. But suddenly, a black horse approached from behind, with Arno riding it. As soon as the girl saw Arno, she thought, Count? Is he the one riding a horse? Isn't that what knights are supposed to do? 
It's so cold and his shirt is open. As he sped up, the wind blew his shirt off his chest, but he didn't care. After this, Milady stopped and watched the count for a long time. The wind not only caused his shirt to fly apart at the sides, but also his silver hair. She could not take her eyes off the image of the count, who was riding a powerful and strong horse. She looked at him, her hair flying. She blushed and thought, the count looks so free. He threw his head back and smiled while the countess thought, freedom, I envy him. The girl asked herself a question in her head. He said, right, that Arno's estate is ours. He can say that because he has freedom. I'm still too far from that count. The countess followed the count, causing her cloak to flutter in the wind. Later, the lady understood that the envy and jealousy she felt at that moment were actually an inferiority complex, all because my lady, unlike the Count, who already manages the estate, was only just learning this. Hello, friends. Good morning. Let me remind you that today the conspiracy will wash you away. The Count is grazing other horses instead of me. This is only to my advantage. I don't want to go outside in such cold weather. Our little sweet friend, it's so cold outside today. Are you okay? Papa Savor will scratch your tummy. My God, look at that beautiful fur. Grow big and healthy, we'll fight side by side. You will be a valuable stallion of the Arno military unit. Don't throw your loyalty around. The father must be of good origin, because genealogy is no less important for horses than for people. The man, having calmed down from his ardor, turned his head towards the source of the woman's firm voice. Sover. Afterwards, the man realized that it was the countess and exclaimed, Countess! How long have you been here? The girl said, I'll pretend I didn't see anything, so keep doing what you're doing. I heard that she has been looking around our lands lately, but why come here? When Milady came to Arno after her marriage, she was constantly dissatisfied and showed it with her whole appearance, so I didn't know how I should behave. I was so tired today that I didn't clean up properly. Wants to find fault with something? After the gentle face of the girl, who followed the countess, the horse licked. She was very frightened by this, which caused her to jump back, where she was caught by an ash-haired man in black robes. Afterwards, her delicate face took on a pinkish hue from the shift, due to the closeness to the squire. It was close. Is everything okay, Yvonne? The girl answered her. Yes, madam, I was just a little scared. Then she walked away from the tall, powerfully built man, saying politely and quietly, Thank you, sir. There seemed to be a lot of horses here, too, even though there were already plenty of them in the pasture. Yes, when the Count's property increased, it was necessary to equip more horses. Only Arno had such a quantity. There are ladies who learn horse riding if you want to. Ask the Count for permission. This is only permissible with the Count's approval. Okay, then get this permission for me. She didn't know for sure whether the Count would allow her to ride, but it was worth a try. The first war between husband and wife was lost. So now Bianca had no confidence at all. The girl looked at the knight and said, Okay, you did a good job. If I get permission, we will cross paths more often. See you later, my friend. The horse put its head under the girl's hand. It was time to leave the stables. Bianca walked ahead, followed by Vincent and two others. The knight froze in a stupor. He did not understand why the lady, about whom so many rumors were circulating, had come to them. Another knight who was carrying hay noticed this. What are you doing? Why are you standing outside in such cold? Recently the countess came here with everyone. He remembered her as a very squeamish woman. But now he had a completely different opinion of the countess. If a person is kind to animals and children, it means that he is good. Besides, the countess was not afraid of those huge war horses. While the knight mumbled something about his great love for his mistress, the other looked at him with incomprehension. She wants to ride a war horse? What the hell is going on? That same evening, Countess Bianca returned to the castle. The sun had long since sunk below the horizon. Yvonne stood with a basket of infusion next to her mistress's bed, preparing for Bianca's arrival. The girl carefully stirred the contents and smiled. Then she threw more wood into the fireplace to keep it from going out. Suddenly, Bianca returned from her evening ablutions. The girl was surprised that the maid had not left yet. Yvonne asked if she could dry Bianca's hair. No, you've done a good job. You're free today. The maid gave her a smile. Then the countess climbed onto the bed, watching as Yvonne calmly closed the door. The girl covered herself with a blanket. It was warm under the blanket. She finally felt good. Bianca reached her hand to the embroidery and said, Now we need to check the homework. She did it very beautifully. Maybe she could create her own template? Then Bianca pulled the blanket even tighter around herself. The girl felt warm. Her eyes gradually closed and her head bowed down. She eventually fell asleep sitting up in bed, clutching the scrap of fabric in her hand. Then her hands relaxed. 
and the beautiful embroidery fell to the floor along with the basket, and the girl fell asleep. After sleeping for a short time, she heard a knock on the door. Bianca opened her eyes, thinking it was Yvonne. She felt someone drying her hair with a towel. The countess remembered. When I was little, I sometimes went to bed with wet hair. The girl turned her head to see who was doing it, and was surprised to see Zachary. Is that you? The man looked surprised, as he did not expect to be noticed. His cheeks turned red, and his gaze went straight to the girl. Bianca turned to face him and asked haltingly, What are you doing here? The girl looked at the man and thought, What is the Count doing in my room at such a late hour? Then he hovered over her, causing a slight blush to appear on the girl's face. This never happened in my past life until I was twenty. So has he changed his mind? Suddenly the girl pulled the man towards her by the collar. Then she threw her leg over the guy, hanging over him. Seeing the guy's face, which expressed excitement, as well as his red cheeks, she thought, It worked. And now what should I do? Calm down, Bianca. You are young in body, but in soul you are almost ten years older than the Count. Her face changed. Her green eyes began to express surprise and misunderstanding, after which she plucked up her courage and, encouraging herself, began to reach out to the Count. She grabbed the guy's head and, parting her scarlet lips, became closer and closer to his face. Suddenly, the idol was broken. The girl suddenly became frightened. Her consciousness became foggy. Sorry for scaring you. I came to ask you something, but you managed to fall asleep with a wet head. You don't want to suffer from a cold again, do you? So I was going to dry your hair and leave, the girl thought. My imagination turned out to be faster than my actions. In reality, the Count is too nimble. The girl finally spoke. What's going on? What were you going to ask me in the middle of the night? Well, how do you like Gaspar? Why did you suddenly start talking about him? To which he replied, Didn't you feel any discomfort while he was around? Even if I feel uncomfortable, will they still see me off? Because you feel calmer. Apart from the fact that he has a massive and prominent body build, he looks after me well. Really? That means he's keeping a good eye on you. The girl looked questioningly and thought, What's wrong with him? He asked for my opinion himself. The man had confused eyes, looking into the distance. And my neck is stiff. The count is too tall, and when he stands like this, I have to lift my head. Then Bianca turned to her husband. Dear. Suddenly, his gaze instantly began to express surprise and excitement. The man turned to the girl and looked at her face in shock. The amazed white-haired man came closer to the girl and asked, Just now did you address me? And to whom else? I just have one question for you. She placed her hand on the empty space on the bed, hinting that the man should sit next to her. So maybe you could sit down next to me and listen to me. Although the man relaxed his face, it still showed his excitement. Finally, after a few seconds, he obeyed his wife and sat down on the bed. She thought, Are you going to sit with your back to me? And why are you suddenly so obedient? Vincent may have told you everything already. I mean, I want to learn horse riding. You are a knight. I am told there are cases where ladies have learned horse riding. Since I am your wife, I want to learn. Horse riding is a sport that requires a lot of endurance. It's hard for you. This man is at it again. I look like a little child to him. Didn't you say that if I want something, I should tell Vincent? Right now, I want to learn horse riding. And the fact that learning will be difficult does not mean that it is completely impossible. I think you're right. But it is better to start training in early spring, not in winter. In winter, it is difficult to find a pony on the market. The girl listened to the man silently. Can you wait until I find the right one? Of course, the guy continued. Then tell Vincent that your training will begin in early spring. She was very happy. She felt as if she had won the fight. I managed to persuade the Count. Looking at his happy wife, the man became a little tense. It was obvious that Bianca was trying to hide all her joy. Damn, I unconsciously showed the joy of my first victory. He won't think I'm acting like a child again, will he? The guy turned around and started to leave, and the girl thought, What? Bianca watched him walk away slowly. Doesn't want to see me smile that much? And indeed, if you think about it, that's true. The Count wasn't interested in me from the very beginning. A kid who has no idea how to buy expensive things. He certainly doesn't care what I do. I must go to the capital of Laos in the spring because of the engagement of Albert, the son of the heir to the throne. It seemed like she was going to start crying right now, but she said it anyway. Got it. Yes, in my past life, everything was exactly the same. In my 19th, the Count was absent for a very long time. This summer marks the 50th anniversary of His Majesty's accession to the throne. In order to avoid traveling back and forth, I will remain in the capital. The girl put her head on her hand and thought, Understood. Then, we will never have an heir, and the Count will die in the war. And they will throw me out of the estate without returning a single penny of my dowry. 
I will live with regrets until I die choking on a bloody cough. The nagging wife from Arno who was always being pointed at. If I lived the same life, then why the hell did I even come back? The girl had a handkerchief in her hands. Her tears were accumulating, almost flowing. The dark-haired girl's cheeks were red. Tears filled her eyes more and more. The man said, Bianca? The girl came out of her thoughts and asked, What? I was originally just going to talk about it right before I left. I know very well that you have been very busy with affairs at the estate these last few days. But maybe you want to go to Laos with me? If the human soul had a form, it would initially resemble hard, colorless glass. The boy and the girl looked at each other. There was a spark between them. And from that night, the souls of Milady and the Count. The bill should merge into one. After that, Zachary asked, maybe we should go to the capital together. There will be a lot of people there, because after all, the engagement of the crown prince is coming up. And you have a good understanding of art and furniture. I think you won't get bored there. You'll be able to look at the objects. This is not just a city, but the very heart of the continent, the center of industry. I want to go with you. Sorry, I'm late. I was talking to the guys about deliveries from the capital. Robert, good morning. Vincent looked sad, and Robert asked, Vincent and you here. In the morning, the lady said that she wanted to take a break from learning how to run the mansion's affairs. I already made a list. I thought I'd show it to her. It wasn't meant to be. I want to do something else now. And you're already doing a better job with housework than me. Vincent, you're the best at this. I'm the best. I can't even be upset because the lady told me that. She just hinted that she didn't want to do it. Vincent yelled. Nothing like that. She spends a lot of time with the seamstress. They say they have to get everything done before spring, the guy asked. Why before spring? Because she's going to Laos, the guy said. What? The lady is going to the capital. This means that Gaspar will continue to accompany the lady. Bianca said he was a good boy, and yes, he would be with her as long as she wanted him to be. Please, if a place becomes available, trust me with her protection. The black-haired man asked. Are you serious? I told you yesterday. The lady seems like a beautiful lady to me. He wants to get closer to Bianca. Don't think you'll get away with it. Whatever you say, Commander. The Count stood up, was about to leave, and said to the girl, Okay, then I'll prepare everything. Dear, thank you for this. I am grateful, sincerely. I am truly grateful. The man looked at her for a moment, and then walked out the door. Good night. His words sounded ordinary and emotionless. Now he stood in front of the window and thought about what he had said that evening. She thanked me, sincerely. It warmed his soul. Several months had passed since then, the trip was approaching, and the sun was getting warmer. Winter had almost retreated. The grass was no longer covered with snow. Animals drank water from the rivers. The trees were again showing off their green foliage, and the spring was slowly but surely coming into its own. Children frolicked happily on the green plains on the outskirts of the city. The boy ran towards the two adults with a red box in his hands. There was a rose symbol on the box. Lately the lady has not been seen anywhere. I heard that she is ill but another replied that it was probably just an excuse. Rumor has it that she makes trinkets. This conversation smoothly turned into contempt for women who made trinkets. The boy with the box who was passing by pursed his lips when he heard about such an attitude towards women. Who do you even think you are? If you don't know, don't blab. The men clearly didn't expect such a little boy to yell at them. They angrily shouted after him and recovered from the shock. It's that little shepherd. Well, watch out. But the boy only stuck out his tongue. The child then reached the little house on the outskirts, still holding the box in his hands. He walked up to the window and said hello. Then the boy put the box on the counter. Nicola, what brings you here? Has the lady arrived yet? But the woman replied that she had not arrived yet. There were four women in the house. One of them was sewing, and the other was knitting. One looked at the other's work and said, Oh my God, Mary, what a beauty! I'm sure the lady will be delighted, the woman added. I guess the muse visited me yesterday. Mary replied. Mary held the baby in her arms and said, I like this much better than weaving. It's an incredible pleasure to bring beauty to life. And I can be with my baby while I work. Oh, and of course, the lady will repay with a minted coin if everything is to her liking. Although there had been bad rumors about her before, the lady gave away the gray squirrel fur coat because she didn't wear it. The lady said she would repay me if I could come up with something wonderful. The boy said that he made a new candle from the one he received last time, making the patterns more refined. I would like to show it to the mistress first, and then to the butler. All this time, a beautiful candle lay in the box. A praying angel was carved into the white wax. All the girls immediately surrounded the boy and cried out in delight. God, what a delight! The boy became embarrassed, and said that he would like to show it to the lady, and they continued. 
Nicola, you are a real genius. Meanwhile, the palace was surprisingly quiet. Only the wind rustled and birds were singing. Bianca sat alone by the window. The girl was thinking about something while her hair shimmered in the sun with all shades of gold. The gem-studded earrings flashed as the girl bowed her head. Lately, so many worries had fallen on her shoulders. There was not a free minute. Now, sitting in complete silence, she again remembered her past life and that cold monastery. In her memories, someone called her name. The girl turned around. Back then, her eyes still shone with hope, the girl thought. Who is this? Your Excellency? The man approached her. Bianca could see his face. Have you forgotten my voice already? The girl was surprised by such an unexpected meeting. That's right, my dear. It's me, the man of your life, Fernand. Auntie, why are you crying? Are you sad because Bianca is getting married? Yes, I am so sad. Our young beauty could marry a duke, but she will be engaged to a poor baron. This is beyond all bounds. How could you dispose of her destiny like this? My poor thing! The little girl looked at the man who addressed her. Bianca, from now on, you are the lady of the house of Arnaud, not Blanchefort. You are obliged to be the keeper of the hearth and protect the family. There is no turning back. No matter what happens, you will remain in the Arnaud family. The girl was in despair. She couldn't believe it. There was no way back to Blanchefort? I will take full responsibility for your life. I can't give you anything, but I promise that I will take care of you and cherish you. Have you heard about this too? They say the Count has a mistress. So that's why he and the lady have no heir? Rumor has it that the lady no longer lets the Count into her bed. It's probably because of her mistress. The lady got married at a young age, when she was not yet mature. And she is too thin to have children. So what happened between us was just a duty for him. He already has a loved one. That's right, Bianca. His heart is already taken. The man came up to the girl from behind and hugged her. The girl was confused. She didn't want it. I will fill your lonely, tormented heart with my love. Believe me, my great love is more than enough for both of us. The girl got angry. Her face showed anger towards this guy. And he only thought, Love me, Bianca. The girl pushed him away and screamed, Let go! Do you love me? Who are you? You said you'd be there, that you wouldn't leave me. But you're a liar. Where were you when I was kicked out of Arno's house? I gave you everything, leaving nothing for myself, and you threw me and my feelings away like worthless trash. When I lost everything, when I needed you, you left me. Bianca, I promised you love, not love, comforted you. True, you consoled me. Thank you, but I don't need it. I thought that I was loved, that you loved yourself. But it was all a lie. There was no love between us. I understand that I should have stayed with the Count, even if he loves another. If I had known that I would lose everything. Someone took the girl by the hand, but she did not wake up. I would never accept neither your nor anyone else's feelings. Suddenly the girl woke up. Tears started flowing from her green eyes. She realized that it was all a dream. She looked at the man who woke her up, and he said, Bianca. Zachary put his hand on the back of the chair and looked at Bianca. He asked, Are you in pain? The girl raised her tearful gaze to him and thought, The Count. When did he come? He's the only one who's always been there. Always. Well, I still can't get what I want most. Wiping away her tears, she said, No, nothing hurts. Count, why are you? Here? Taking a deep breath, she looked up. Zachary looked at her in surprise. The blonde man lowered his head and asked, Do you want to go for a walk? The girl agreed. They walked into the distance, across a beautiful green field. Zachary walked quickly, the wind blowing his white bangs. The girl couldn't keep up with Zachary. Bianca began to be indignant in her thoughts. What a man! Is he really showing off his long legs right now? No, he is! The dark-haired girl lifted her skirt and quickened her pace, trying to catch up with the young man. The girl always watched from afar, afraid to even approach Zachary. They practically did not know each other. Noticing that the guy had gone too far, he turned his head and looked back. Seeing that the girl was running, he stopped and waited for Bianca to catch up with him. The young man looked into the distance. The girl ran closer and asked, Have we arrived? No, we need to go a little further. Bianca began to mentally resent. Then why did you stop? Zachary started walking, but more slowly. The dark-haired girl lowered her head her cheeks covered with a slight blush, she thought. Trying to fit in, Bianca pursed her lips and looked at the guy. Did I get it right? The blonde man looked ahead. He sighed heavily. But seeing the young man trying to catch his breath, the girl thought, I see. It turns out he was just out of breath himself. The white-haired man waved his hand through the air, as if he wanted to point somewhere. After looking around for a bit, he pointed ahead and said, Look, there. Bianca looked up. 
She fixed her hair and asked, What's there? When she looked at herself, she was surprised. Her eyes began to sparkle. There was a horse standing near one of the trees. It was standing all alone and eating grass. The white horse stood peacefully in the meadow, wearing a saddle. The girl screamed, It can't be! But the young man said calmly, It can! Zachary looked at his joyful companion. My promise, given in winter. They both slowly started to descend the hill. They came closer to the horse. Seeing the horse up close, the girl thought, Oh my God, can I touch it? Bianca slowly tried to touch the horse. The horse did not resist. It put its muzzle to the girl's hand as a sign of agreement. The girl said happily, So affectionate, it seems she won't run away, even if she's not on a leash. Smart girl. She smiled and added, What an incredible feeling. This is the first time I've been given something so dear and valuable. Someone else's life. The young man's cheeks turned red. He was embarrassed by such words from a girl. But without thinking twice, he moved his hand to her waist and said, I'm glad you liked it. The young man hugged the girl around the waist. The girl's eyes closed in surprise. The young man leaned closer to her face. A thought crossed Bianca's mind. Why so suddenly? The Count put his arm around the Countess's waist. Wait, try sitting on her. Once on the horse, the Countess said, It's not scary at all. The Count took the Countess by the hand and said, From tomorrow I will teach you horse riding. The Countess, looking at the Count, said, I am grateful, but I do not want to take up your time. The Count smiled slightly and said, You are not wasting my time. Teaching you is my personal desire. The Countess was surprised and blushed slightly, looking at the Count. The girl lowered her head and said, I see. But your hands! Are we going to hold on like this? The Count handed the reins to the Countess and said, You're already saddled, so take the reins, and let's explore the territory. The Count asked, Are you going to the ladies today, too? The Countess answered, Yes, the Countess thought. I remember him as a stern man. From this angle he looked vulnerable, as if he were all mine. Bianca, you started thinking with another place, not with your head. The Countess was surprised by her thoughts. Then Zachary turned to the Countess and said, Can I ask you something? He continued, Why don't you call me like last time? Bianca didn't understand what her husband was talking about and asked again, Last time? Zachary decided he needed to change the subject quickly. The man cleared his throat and asked, Seamstresses embroider lace, right? The Countess did not expect that he would be interested in such things, although Gaspard and Vincent must have told him everything. Even though the materials are cheap, the lace itself is expensive and valuable. The girl added that lace will still conquer the world. You just have to wait a little. Zachary was perplexed. He asked again, Conquer the whole world? Why are you so sure? Bianca realized her mistake. She remembered that her husband doesn't know about the future and corrected herself. It just seems that way to me. The man was furious. Are you still worried that I won't be able to earn large sums? The girl said. After what I saw in the stable, I have no doubt. I just had to, by the way. Then she added, If something happens in the future, I want to have solid ground under my feet. She said she didn't want to be the kind of person people only knew because they were related to someone. Her voice was calm. I just want to be Bianca. Strong and independent Bianca. The Count repeated with a smile. Strong and independent, then. Fine thinking, my lady. Fit for a knight's wife. The girl's cheeks flushed. She still couldn't get used to being called a knight's wife. Bianca turned her head away sharply, causing a wave of confusion in Zachary. Then she blurted out again. I still want a son from you. I hope we have an heir soon. The man said, If a child is born, you will be remembered not as the girl who created lace, but as the mother of a count, Bianca replied. What's wrong with that? Married girls should think about their husband and successor, but I just get angry. But it's true that she had no choice but to be angry and worried. Her husband was always on the front lines. Zachary took a step towards the girl and said, I see. This must be hard for you. But a lady can lose her life before, during, and after childbirth, and a knight can fall by the sword at any moment. Hearing this from Count Arno, the Countess remembered a story she had once heard. She told of a young man who was banished from his home. The sad past of a knight who had learned the cruelty of the world. Without a single squire or servant, he made his own name. This was the story of Zachary de Arnaud, two souls who would already be living in perfect harmony if they had met under different circumstances. I was too young when I married him, and he probably went to the battlefield without having time to really understand anything. She looked at the man, who was thoughtfully looking at something in the distance in front of him. Suddenly the man leading the horse turned around. The girl said, Count. After a few moments she continued, Really? The girl was dragging out her speech. 
not knowing what words to choose. All this time, finally the girl finished her words. Were you worried about me? The man looked at the girl, amazed. He hesitated. I... Suddenly, a voice was heard from afar. My God! Is that our lady sitting majestically on a steed? Bianca and the man turned around almost simultaneously. A boy appeared behind the girl. Nicola was waiting for you so much. He kept asking when you would come. She suddenly exclaimed, Ah, oh, my lord, is it the master? Forgive me. I thought it was one of the servants, and I showed disrespect. The green-eyed girl looked at her and thought, Why now? Suddenly the white-haired man said calmly, They've been waiting for you for a long time. Leave the horse to me. The girl quietly lowered her legs, realizing that the horse was a living creature. The man helped Bianca get off the saddle. The man said, And if you give her a name, you'll get closer faster. Think about it for now. This is your first assignment for horse riding lesson. The man galloped off on his horse in his direction, the sound of hooves echoing around him. The girl remained in place, looking after the man. The nineteenth spring in her life began like this. It promised much, which made it different from the previous ones. The dark-haired girl in the red dress turned to the guy sitting next to her. My husband has probably already looked for me. The guy kissed the girl, then moved away and said, I already told you to forget about him when you're with me. Suddenly the girl became wary, and the guy who was kissing her cheeks seemed not to care. Wait! The girl turned around and was horrified. Someone had come. Jacob! The man extended his hand to the girl, who jumped up nervously and said, Wait! I told you everything was fine. The man sat down, crossed his legs, and said, Seriously? Well, I wouldn't want to play with someone like that for long. So, did you find out what I asked for? The guy said, rubbing his chin. Yes, your highness the second prince. They say that Zachary D'Arnaud will be arriving in the capital with his wife. And that's interesting. The Ironblood's wife will be here then. Spring has started off well this year, hasn't it? The king's golden throne was decorated with roses. On it lay the king's own crown. It was a royal family with four people. They had two children, a son, the heir, and a daughter. The mother was holding her son. This boy had a golden rose in his hand. The guy in the fur coat stood and looked at the portraits. He stood and looked at all the photographs hanging on that wall. How did they address the guy here? Your Highness the Second Prince. He turned his head and introduced himself. Oh, long time no see. Count Blanchefort. The man looked at the blonde guy in front with a smirk. The man introduced the young man. Let me introduce you to my son, Joachim. The guy immediately started talking. Count, I recently heard some interesting news. Count Arno is coming to the capital with his wife. If I remember correctly, she is your daughter, Count Blanchefort? The boy smiled and said, That same nine-year-old girl who was married off to an adult knight, right? My mother was extremely concerned that the daughter of a distant relative, Countess Blanchefort, would marry the baron. The youth cried out, Your Highness, you are too rude. Count Arno. The guy stood there in bewilderment. But at that moment, that same baron became the count and the main hero of our continent. The fair-haired man smiled. I see. I'm already looking forward to the day when I'll get to meet this hero in person. He turned around and started to leave, he said. And if he's lucky, he'll meet the countess too. The man stood and watched as the boy walked away, following him with his eyes. The young man began to get indignant. The way he casually mentioned Bianca and insulted our family was unacceptable rudeness. The man turned to his son. Joachim, go home and write a letter to Arno. The man turned his head. Tell them that when they arrive, I want to meet Bianca first. The young man stood in shock. I beg your pardon? Are you serious, father? The guy was happy. Then I would be able to see Bianca for the first time in ten years. The man, lowering his head, said in a calm voice, This year she is already nineteen. The countess got off her horse and stood right in the mud. The girl tried to carefully get out of the mud so as not to get dirty. The countess could barely stand on her feet. Her maid quickly ran up. Mistress. The countess sat down on the floor while the maid kept asking questions. Mistress, are you okay? No. Everything hurts terribly. The girl let go of the rope and began to fall. Mistress! But then she was caught and did not fall. The girl was very exhausted and without strength. The man picked up the girl in his arms and carried her. I think your idea to take up horse riding is very timely, the guy said. Here, I said goodbye to Isabel. Of course, it would be better if you took her to the stable yourself. The girl leaned over the horse. See you tomorrow, Isabel. I'm heavy, but you did a good job. The countess looked at him and said, Count, let me go. The girl said to him, Let me go. I'm heavy. I'd rather walk on my own two feet. The count looked at the countess and said, Not heavy at all. Someone who eats several olives cannot be heavy. She looked away and said, 
I just had no appetite this morning. Has anyone reported what I have for breakfast yet? I'm sure that the more time you spend outdoors, the more you'll start eating. Zachary continued to carry the girl in his arms. She said, Let go already. What will the servants think? This way, the couple were able to spend more time together before their trip to Laos. Although this was not enough to make up for lost time, both realized that they did not hate each other. One such day, when Bianca and Zachary went out horseback riding again, the sun was shining brightly. The white-haired man kept encouraging the girl. He turned around and said happily, You're doing well, he added. You just need to pull the reins a little in the right direction. The girl was still unsure. Bianca took care of the reins and looked at the Count. He hadn't taken his eyes off her the whole time. The girl asked, Count, are you thinking about something? But the man did not answer right away. After a few seconds, he answered, I've already touched on this topic, but I'll ask again. Why didn't you call me? His face looked confused. Why didn't you call me darling? The girl was surprised. Bianca thought about it. Come to think of it, she had always called him darling before. It surprised him. Memories of her begging him to take her on the trip, calling him darling, came flooding back to her. What the? Does he still remember? Finally, the girl jerked the reins sharply, making excuses. I wanted to say wait, but it came out as expensive. She added, You must have misunderstood me. Besides, we weren't that close at the time. Yes, they were officially married, but their relationship was far from marital. The man became sad, he said. I thought it was a hint that it was time to address each other in a special way. The girl's face turned even redder. She said, Now you are my writing teacher, and I am your student. Bianca added, We will have time to discuss everything later. After that, the Count's eyes shone with hope again. She led her horse forward, and after thinking for a moment, she threw. So just wait, teacher. Isabel and I will still surpass you and Noah. After these words, Arno laughed. Surpass, then? The girl saw his smile. She liked it when he smiled like that. When her husband smiled, he reminded her of a child who had not yet experienced life. He clenched his fist and said, Then I accept the challenge. Suddenly, he poked his finger across the bridge of the girl's nose. Then, with all the tenderness in his eyes, he said, I hope this day comes as soon as possible. They continued to ride their horses, and the girl, in surprise, pulled hard on the reins. This scene was observed by two men from the village. They did not take their eyes off it. Rumors about the lady doing something mysterious with the seamstresses and spending money on candles did not subside. But new ones appeared, about the Count and his wife. The estate was again filled with expectation and hope for an heir. Around the same time, the letter from Blanchefort reached its addressee. The first letter arrived during preparations for the lady's wedding, so it turned out to be the second letter for the entire time. Zachary read the letter carefully. He wrote that he wanted to meet Bianca right away. So what did he have in mind? He added, I'll let the lady know when the time comes, but for now, there's no point in spreading the word. Vincent listened to every word and then nodded his head. Small miscalculations always lead to trouble. It happened the day before leaving for Laos. That same scientist with a monocle stood in front of Bianca and said something. Then the girl turned around and walked away upset. He tried to stop her. This is not it. But she couldn't be convinced, she whispered. And I only find out about it the day before leaving. Then the girl's voice broke into an angry scream. When were you going to tell me, Vincent? There was an open envelope on the table. Zachary was sitting by the window and reading the letter. Dear Count Arno, they say you want to visit Laos. Everyone wants to meet the hero of Savran. I also heard that the Countess will be with you. I look forward to meeting you both on site. Count Gustave de Blanchefort, written by Joachim de Blanchefort. The letter asking to meet the daughter was overly formal. The older brother is probably the same as the father. Zachary turned and looked out the window. Count Blanchefort never asked about Bianca's well-being. Bianca never corresponded with him. Should she be allowed to see her family, who forgot about her for nine years? He looked at Bianca through the window, his gaze full of tenderness. The girl's irresistible beauty amazed him, even though she was far away. He blushed. It had been a long time since she had had writing lessons, and I hadn't seen her with her hair up. But she looked so much better this way. Zachary continued to look out the window, genuinely enjoying this moment. Everyone was busy packing. Soon they decided to leave fifteen boxes of the lady to lighten the luggage, to which she was indignant. Vincent said that the Count only had eight pieces, and she replied that this was nonsense and ordered him to return everything back. Bianca raised her head and looked menacingly at the man. Tell me, Vincent, are these really all the Count's things? The man answered. Yes. Why? The girl chuckled. Be honest with me. 
Is our county really that poor? Vincent was indignant. Of course not, the girl said suspiciously. Our state really can't be called that. But why then? She took a couple of Zachary's things. That shirt is so old, and that vest he wore while riding? Bianca pointed to the black cape in the drawer. She exclaimed, And what kind of low-quality fur is this? You don't get it. The Count just wears ordinary clothes. Quiet. These things are not ordinary. They are unkempt. It was not for nothing that I decided to check. If I hadn't asked, when would you have told me? Why do the Count's things look like floor rags? In fact, the Count's things were of excellent quality. But they did not at all correspond to the lady's sense of beauty. She turned to another pile of boxes, pointed at them, and screamed, What's there? Another pile of rags? Bianca walked towards the boxes, and the maid followed her nervously, afraid that she would destroy everything in her path out of anger. The maid said, Mistress, the butler said he would allow you to take more things. I have enough. The girl looked at the butler. Vincent, empty the boxes. I will choose suitable clothes for his lordship myself. After a while, the girl said, It turned out well. This is a great opportunity to change her husband's style. Vincent cried out, You want to buy the Count new clothes? My husband is a great warrior. In such clothes he looks like a commoner. I'm going to go with a country bumpkin? I can't stand being made fun of because of an old-fashioned husband, Vincent said. Very well, madam. Zachary watched with fascination as his wife chased the poor butler. The man laughed and blushed. Bianca even took control of Vincent. I've never seen him like this. His cheeks turned red again, but suddenly he noticed that someone else had approached his wife. Looking a little closer, he saw a familiar face. Zachary thought, Sovor? The boy stared at the two, confused, thinking dejectedly. He said he wanted to get along with Bianca. Zachary rose from his chair. Sovor laughed at something. I wonder what they were talking about. Bianca looked at the young man with distrust. So you want to take the Count's things for yourself? Yes, you still want to throw it away. You can also disassemble it for fabric. The Count has a build. Will the clothes suit you? Compared to Robert, I'm bigger. Gaspar is too tall, so my build is closest to the Count's. Vincent opened the box. The Countess said, Okay, take what you need. And the guy was happy and thanked her, the Countess thought. I always get tired after talking to him. Then she was about to leave and saw the Count. The Countess waved her hand at him and thought, I see him every day, but it's more pleasant to watch him. And the Count just left. The Count sat up, blushed and thought, How unexpected! It is not proper for a grown man to spy on a girl. Previously, the Count could not even approach the Countess. But now they calmly look into each other's eyes. Gaspar is there for protection, and Sover can start a conversation. When someone else is with her, I feel weird. Marriage guarantees success. So I could tolerate the criticism that came my way. And it doesn't matter that the marriage is formal. But at some point, it became a problem. Before, I only felt pity for her. But now I hope that she will not have to suffer. The countess in a green cloak got into the carriage and was about to leave. The countess turned around and saw the count talking to Vincent and thought, he seems busy. Everyone started to fuss and went somewhere. But the countess had one thing in her mind. How to talk to the count. The count and the knights rode out on horseback after the carriage. And the count shouted, We are leaving for Laos. Several days have passed since the departure of the lady and the count to Laos. Vincent, who always wears the same suit, said, Good day. The two girls looked at him. Come in, Mr. Butler. He held out the box and said, I have brought you the gold and linen threads you asked for. To this she smiled and said, Something good happened? You are simply glowing. He started to joke. Maybe the weather is getting warmer. That's why he's full of energy. I won't interfere. Keep working. One of the girls standing to the side answered, Because of the warm weather, right? Everyone in Arno knows that he has become comfortable since the lady has left, and there is no longer any reason to grumble about expenses although in fact he really likes the lady. Otherwise, he would have given all his duties to the lady long ago. Previously, she sat in the room and bought things. But now the relationship with the Count has changed, and it won't be long before the descendant. The girl put the box on the floor and opened it. There were threads in it. I will demonstrate the lace at the first opportunity, after which many nobles will begin sending requests to Arno. In the meantime, continue to improve the patterns and finished lace. I will tell Vincent to help you with everything, so don't worry. And then the countess said, From now on you will not be seamstresses and weavers, but proud lace masters in Arno. The girl, looking at the countess, blushed. She was very surprised. The countess looked at the little blonde boy who stood next to the girl and said, And also, Nicola. She smiled and continued, 
I am going to visit the shrine and thank God. The boy looked at the countess with surprise. She replied, For sending such talented masters to Arno, the countess got into the carriage and they drove away, and the blue-eyed boy and the girl looked after them. In the short period of time from winter to spring, they acquired a lot thanks to the lady. The girl loved to make lace from threads, and the fair-haired boy loved to carve candles, and they hoped for the safe return of the lady who had invested money in their talents and potential. There was a beautiful sunset outside. The sun was already visible behind the mountains. Everyone decided to stop, Arno asked. Is the road unusable because of the landslide? Yes, there is one road left that can be traveled on horses, but a carriage cannot pass there. You will have to push it, Arno asked. If we go around, how long will it take? Robert said. Since we have a lot of things, the journey will take two weeks. We didn't have to worry about delays, but there is a village across the road where we wanted to stop. If we choose to take the detours instead of the direct route, we will have to spend the night in the open air. The girl got out of the carriage when Robert asked the Count, What should we do? He folded his arms across his chest and wondered what to do when Robert asked him, Count? He replied, I don't think we can move everything by hand, so we'll spend the night here and then go around. He looked Robert in the eyes and said, I'll explain everything to my wife myself. He approached the Countess and extended his hand to her. She looked at his hand, not expecting him to do so. Gaspar approached the maid. Everything is fine. Grab it, she answered. No, no need. I'll get out myself, he said. Take it, Bianca thought. It wasn't like he hadn't been like that before. And especially towards Yvonne. She said, Yvonne, come down quickly. I need to fix my clothes. The maid replied, Of course, madam. Yvonne started to descend in a hurry. Gaspard held her so that she wouldn't fall. Gaspard looked worriedly at the dark-haired maid. I'm already going down. Soon, Yvonne came down and headed towards Bianca, who was looking suspiciously at Gaspar. Then she thought, Even so? Bianca said, Yvonne, if a knight offers you his hand, take it without hesitation. Yvonne asked, What? Why? The countess explained, Because holding a lady's hand is the highest honor for them. Yvonne replied, What honor is that? But during their conversation, someone began to tug at Mrs. Bianca's long green cloak. It was a man, Sovor, who said in a strange voice, Madam, your hem is completely wrinkled, and how much dust. Isn't it hard to sit in a carriage for so long? If you walk over there, you'll reach the valley and the source of the Arno River. I'm sure you'd like to take a walk. Let me accompany you, Bianca thought, embarrassed. Is he trying to pay me back for giving him all the Count's things? Simple as pie, she answered. Tell me where to go. I'll walk with Gaspar. Sovor said, Gaspar will get lost in three pines. A hand fell on the man's shoulder. What nonsense! No need to pull the wool over the mistress's eyes. Sovor and Bianca looked behind the brunette's back together to find out who it was, since it was not clear from the voice alone. Without removing his hand from the strong shoulder, he informed Countess Bianca in a calm voice. Madam, the Count is looking for you. The worker commanded, Drive all the horses there. Don't let that donkey go yet. Bianca became worried. What's all the fuss about? We were just stopping for a short break. After a few moments, the knight asked the girl, Aren't you tired, madam? You've been riding all day. You might have gotten seasick. Afterwards, Robert added, We still have a long way to go, so don't hide it if you don't feel well, she thought. What was his name? Sovor or something? Was he really worried or just kidding? Is he like Vincent, who only grumbles? Is he hinting that if I endure it, I'll faint and cause trouble? Bianca said. It seems you still don't know me very well. I'm far from being a softie who would fall over from a simple sneeze, she continued. After all, I don't walk all day, I can survive a carriage ride, he asked. Really? Their conversation was interrupted by a firm but animated male voice. Bianca. The girl's heart began to beat faster, and her cheeks became slightly pinkish. It was Zachary, who was beautifully dressed in luxurious knightly robes. Let's take a walk. After these words, the Count extended his hand to the girl, inviting her to take a walk with him, Bianca thought. Maybe we haven't spoken for a long time? I feel happy to see him again. She took his hand, placing her delicate and graceful palm in it. Bianca thought, When I look at the Count, my heart flutters and beats without respite from this. It was already approaching sunset. A beautiful girl and a white-haired guy came to the waterfall. The girl said, The source of the Arno River. This is the beginning of the river that flows in front of the mansion, she continued. The distance to it would take about two days on a fast horse the girl said. This is what Sover wanted to show me. Beautiful. I'm missing out on so much, sitting in the mansion. The guy looked away and said, 
and you've become friends lately, with Sovor. Calling him a friend would be too much. He just wants to thank me. Then the guy looked at her. The girl thought for a moment and said with a pause, So? Bianca turned to the guy and said calmly, Don't be jealous. To which the guy looked at her and replied with a smile, Okay. The guy looked away and blushed slightly. And the girl thought, The Count really was jealous now. The Count extended his hand to the girl and said with a smile, It's time to go. The girl took the Count's hand. They held hands to get closer. The Count was clearly worried about something, and that was why his heart was restless. The girl turned to the Count and asked worriedly, Why are you thinking? The Count said, I have two pieces of news. The girl asked excitedly, Two? The boy asked excitedly, So, did you have a good relationship with your brother when you lived in Blanchefort? The girl answered calmly, Yes, you could say that. After my mother died in childbirth, I only had a brother left. She began to describe her brother. He always had a bright smile and he was cunning. The girl got into the carriage and continued. He's just like his father. He hasn't even sent a message in ten years. The Count listened attentively to the girl. My brother always shared everything with me, except for one thing, chocolate cake. The little boy picked up the plate of cake and shook his head. The girl gobbled up the cake, afraid that it would be taken away. One day I finally succeeded, but I remember that day well, because that's when they told me about the wedding. I didn't know this word then. If I had known, I would have refused immediately. But I had already taken the Count by the hand and followed him. The girl clutched her white dress with her gentle palms, which were trembling slightly from anxiety. The girl was trembling. The man noticed this. She sat, head bowed. Zachary asked, Bianca, is everything okay? He continued, I think you're tired. Yes, after so many hours of sitting, we immediately went there on foot. Gentle palms covered Bianca's face, which had acquired a pinkish tint. As a supporter of the first prince, my father took the lead in the fight against Aragon on behalf of his son-in-law. The girl remembered Vincent. Her eyes sparkled when she looked at him. In an instant, the green eyes widened in horror with a thought. Joachim followed his father. This is where the story of the Blanchefort family ended, the girl thought. She felt sick because of the near future, where no one would be around. The man said, What I mean is, a letter has arrived from Blanchefort. They want to meet, Zachary continued. If you don't want to, you have the right to refuse. Bianca's cheeks took on a pinkish tint, Bianca thought. The Count really cares about me. How could I not notice his kindness in my past life? She placed her palm on the graceful face of the fair-haired man, whose silver eyes sparkled. Bianca stroked his face. Zachary's heart began to beat faster. She said, Thank you. Suddenly, she touched the tender lips of the fair-haired man. After a few moments, the graceful and long fingers that were well-groomed recoiled from Zachary's face. However, the white-haired man followed the gentle hand with his sweat-dripping face. Heavy breathing could be heard from his slightly open mouth. The dark-haired girl was very surprised by this, which gave her an idea. He goes down after my hand. The man began to stroke the girl's soft lips with his fingers. Bianca thought, The Count wants to kiss me? She thought as Zachary continued to lower his head. Why so suddenly? I have nothing against it, but, she thought, so this is our first kiss since I returned to the past. Should we rush? Bianca said silently. What if there is no more opportunity? Suddenly, Yvonne came in. Madam, are you back? She said. But at the end, she became quiet. I was told that we would spend the night here immediately. Sir Gaspard must bring you the skin, Yvonne said. Forgive my ignorance as best I could, Bianca replied. Yvonne, it's not what you think. The Countess asked her husband. Are we staying here overnight? Is this the second piece of news you wanted to tell us? He turned his gaze away and said guiltily, I'm sorry. I was trying to avoid you sleeping in the carriage. Afterwards, he returned his gaze, saying, You have the right to be angry. Bianca, puzzled by the man's words, asked, Why? I don't see anything wrong with spending the night on the road. The girl added, And where are you going to sleep? In my carriage? His face immediately flushed, and he answered, Two of us in one carriage. What will people think? she exclaimed. Why is your face so red? We are married and will sleep in the same carriage. It's all logical. Then she added, If you sleep on the ground and I'm here, then it's worth thinking about what people will think. Then she said, And what makes you think there'll be two of us? Yvonne and Gaspar can fit in here too, Yvonne said. Madam, that's definitely strange, the man replied. I've already decided that I'll sleep outside. And then he added, Don't worry about anything and settle down here with Yvonne. We'll continue our conversation later. The Count wanted to talk about reuniting the lady with her family. 
However, during the entire trip, they were never able to finish that conversation. Ten days have passed since leaving the estate. Initially, it was planned to arrive a few days earlier, but one way or another they arrived in Laos. Laos, the capital of Sevran. This city held its position between Agron and Castilla for a hundred years. An embroidered pattern of red roses entwined with golden thorns adorned the banner. The Saravan family flag was raised on a pole of a fortress as tall as a huge snow mountain. Zachary drove up to the gate of his house and shouted, Open the gate! He spoke even louder. Count Zachary d'Arnaud, arrived by order of His Majesty the King, the gates opened. The heavy chains clanged as they hit the ground. The chains thundered loudly. Bianca sat in the carriage and looked at her husband. The black wolf pattern. It was the flag of the Agron family. The carriage and horses on which the boys were sitting went inside the palace. All the inhabitants were delighted when they saw that Zachary himself and Bianca arrived at the palace. The people shouted, Long live the hero Zachary d'Arnaud! Long live the furious count! Bianca looked at the happy people, her cheeks slightly blushing. All the villagers waved as the blonde man approached. One of the maids who was riding with Bianca joyfully pointed ahead and said, Mistress, look there! On the way to His Majesty's residence, one had to pass through three huge gates. The girl looked at the high gates in surprise. Behind these gates stood a huge castle. And so this long road has come to an end. When the carriage door opened, Bianca looked at the lock in surprise. As Bianca stepped out of the carriage, she thought, We have arrived at Laos Castle. When they both entered the castle, the young man said, His Majesty is now in Princess Audrey's garden. Looking at the girl, he added, This is a private reception. The atmosphere will be relaxed, so don't worry. The girl's cheeks turned red. She bit her lower lip and said, I wish I could, but I can't. She lowered her head. Her body began to tremble. Zachary looked at Bianca in surprise. Seeing how well off the girl was, Zachary brought his hand into Bianca's small hand and took her by it. Feeling her husband's hand touch hers, she looked up and looked at him. Zachary lifted the girl's small hand. Bianca's face flushed. Zachary looked at the dark-haired girl with concern. He said, I can go alone, to which her sweet lips showed a warm and necessary smile. Everything is fine. The girl intertwined their fingers. They held each other tightly. Let's go. Zahari and Bianca went out into the garden. They both smiled sweetly and walked to the meeting place. Walking along the path, the girl saw butterflies. She, seeing them, immediately smiled even more. When they reached, Zachary said, You are here together? Your Majesty, Your Highness the First Prince. A man and a young blonde youth stood in the garden. Bowing to Zachary, he said, Your Majesty, you look better than last time, the man asked. Is the lady with you? To which Bianca replied, My name is Bianca Diarno, Zachary's wife. With a smile on his face, the man said, So it's you. Nice to meet you, Countess. I am Victor de Saravon, King of Saravon. I was looking forward to meeting you. The Count said that you were ill, so you could not come to Laos. Is it really fate that I met you before my death? I dare say, my lady resembles the late Countess Blanchefort. The white-haired man decided to introduce himself. I am the eldest prince, Gautier Saravon. The guy came closer and smiled. If these flowers weren't for my wife, I would give them to you. However, Count Arno was ready to give another rose that would never fade. Bianca looked at her husband and thought, Never fades? Victor said. The North Tower, where you will stay, is the most picturesque place in the castle. Zachary bowed and said, Thank you. Let's go, Bianca. Bianca nodded her head in agreement. She thought, First Prince Gautier. In my future, he died. The throne was inherited not by Albert, the son of the first prince, but by the second prince Jacob. Bianca thought, this is the story of Sevran, which I know from my past life. My family and Arno favor the first prince, but at this rate, Gautier will not be able to gain the throne. Maybe it's time to pay attention to the second prince? Of course, there are many scandals surrounding his person. The girl was flying in her thoughts and noticed how she crashed into the guy. She screamed. Before she could understand what had happened, she felt a strong hand on her shoulder. The young blonde boy who collided with Bianca caught her and kept her from falling. The guy smiled and said, Are you okay, my lady? I apologize. I was in a hurry. The girl only stuttered, No, everything is fine. I turned sharply. The guy came closer and asked in his melodious voice, Beautiful lady, what family are you from? But then Zachary interrupted them. He saw the two of them and called out to his wife, Bianca! Bianca pushed the boy away from her and said haltingly, Seriously, you were walking too fast. She ran to the guy. What if I got distracted for a second and lost him? and in an unfamiliar place, too. Zachary pulled his hand. 
I'm sorry, I won't let you go now. The girl placed her small hand in her husband's hand and came closer. But tearing his gaze away from Bianca, Zachary looked forward at the boy. My God, you are Countess Arno. Everyone in the castle was in an uproar at the arrival of the Count. My wife made a mistake. Sorry, Second Prince. The girl was surprised, and her cheeks became slightly flushed. The young man just stood there and smiled while Bianca looked at him. And then Bianca thought, This man is a prince. My name is Jacob de Saravan, Countess. I welcome you to Laos. Did you know that your mother is my mother's niece? I am happy to meet my distant relative. I know that my mother and Sarivan are related, but Blanchefort never maintained relations with the royal family. Thank you for your concern, but the fact that I have royal blood in me doesn't really surprise me that much. I am not a member of the royal family. There is nothing special about that, Your Highness. The man who was hugging the girl listened to her words and turned to her. Damn. I was so pissed that he was so close. That's why I said it without thinking. To talk like that to a member of the royal family. Milady, please forgive me if I offended you. We just met. I wanted to get to know you better. No, it's me who should apologize. You seem like a sincere person. Don't hide your feelings and speak as you did now. If something bothers you during your stay in Laos, I hope you will contact me. He stares like that, even though he knows I'm a married woman. It's unpleasant. The green-eyed girl thought about what to do, and finally, gathering her courage, she said, God, I'm so tired. Let's go back already, darling. Of course the man was a little taken aback by the girl's words and said, Bianca, why all of a sudden? The royal boy standing in front of them began to nervously rub his neck as he looked at the girl. Suddenly his face and eyes became wild as if he was crazy. The count immediately hugged his wife tighter. I beg your pardon, your highness. My wife is tired from the journey, so we will go. The guy standing in front of them tried to put on a kind, happy face, although emotions were raging inside him. Finally, the blonde answered, Good. The white-haired man bowed his head slightly, bowing and said, Thank you, your highness. He turned around abruptly, holding his wife, and quickly stomped towards the exit. The blonde was left alone and only watched as the count and his wife walked towards the exit. When they walked away, a conversation ensued. You can call me dear in such situations. Thanks for playing along. Whatever happens, don't visit the second prince. Even if I'm not around, which won't happen. I am the daughter of the Blanchefort family and the wife of Arnaud. I married to help. The man turned back the way they came and said, I'm just worried about you. The second prince is a treacherous man. Then he turned back. Behind them, the second prince in question remained standing. The man continued to finish his speech. I don't know what he had in mind, but I hope you don't come near him.